welcome to the Bluegrass State. Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky is the site of tonight's state championship between the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky University and the Wildcats of Kentucky. A week ago, the Joker Phillips era got off on the right foot as Big Blue down Louisville to win their fourth consecutive Governor's Cup. WKU comes to town with a new head coach of their own. Former Hilltoppers quarterback Willie Taggart is looking to bring back the winning ways to Bowling Green. Tonight, it's the SEC on CSS, presented by Regions Bank, and it's coming up now. been barbecuing for hours outside Commonwealth Stadium in anticipation of the home opener tonight as Western Kentucky University versus the Kentucky Wildcats SEC football presented by Regions Bank. And good evening, I'm Matt Stewart. Tonight is the home head coaching debut for Joker Phillips, which sounds a little bit odd because Joker Phillips has been associated with the Kentucky Wildcats program for over 20 years. First as a star wide receiver, 17 years as an assistant coach, the last two years as the head coach and waiting for the now retired Rich Brooks. Time now to bring in my partner, Chris Doring, the former Florida Gator star wide receiver, 17 years ago today, had one of the biggest moments of his career, but we'll talk about that later. Let's talk about Kentucky. Joker Phillips has in Randall Cobb and in Derek Lott, two ball players, the envy of any major college football program. Yeah, Matt, they are the most dynamic duo in all the country right now. Everything that Kentucky does goes through these guys, both offensively and special teams wise. You better believe the success that they have tonight will dictate the success of the Kentucky Wildcats team. Meantime, the Hilltoppers trying to snap a 21 game losing streak, in fact, started on this field two years ago. It's the longest streak in the nation. New head coach Willie Taggart and a running back in Bobby Rainey who would like to break Taggart's rushing records. Oh, Bobby Rainey is the best player on this Hilltopper team. Last week against Nebraska, he accounted for 191 yards through the air and on the ground. He made it two thirds of the yardage that the Hilltoppers were able to gain were because of him. He's got to have a big night if they hope to pull the upset. It's the Western Kentucky University Hilltoppers and the Kentucky Wildcats. Two state rivals, but meeting for just the second time in their football histories. Opening kickoff is next. SEC football on CSS is brought to you by Regions Bank. If you're ready for a better banking experience and switch to Regions, Regions Bank, proud to be the official bank of the Southeastern Conference. By Academy Sports and Outdoors, helping you support your team with licensed gear and tailgating essentials at low prices every day. And by Tony Sacheries. Turn your same old into Creole with Tony Sacheries' original Creole seasoning. Tony Sacheries makes everything taste great. Back on the campus of the University of Kentucky, Western Kentucky University versus the Kentucky Wildcats, the home opener for the Wildcats after they opened on the road, a big victory over Louisville last Saturday. Kentucky won the opening toss. They have elected to defer until the second half. Therefore, the Hilltoppers will receive the opening kick and be on offense. Willie McNeil standing deep for the toppers, wearing their white uniforms trimmed in red and silver. Kentucky in their home blue. And the freshman, Joe Mansour, who was the national kickoff specialist of the week, will let it fly. McNeil from the 11-yard line. And McNeil stopped at the 27, and that's where the Hilltoppers go on offense for the first time in time now for our Tony Sachery's ingredients for success. Chris? Matt, the uh, Western Kentucky Hilltoppers have got to hit some big plays. Kentucky's defense is going to allow them to take some opportunity, take some shots down the field. They will not be able to put sustained drives together consistently, so they have got to hit those big plays when they're there. And for the University of Kentucky Wildcat defense, they need to go ahead and stop the run, make the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers throw the ball, get them out of their comfort level, control the line of scrimmage. Turn your same old into Creole with Tony Sachery's original Creole seasoning. First and 10 for the toppers. 
First handoff of the ball game goes to Bobby Rainey as Rainey picks up about seven on the play. Tony Sachery's ingredients for success for the Kentucky Wildcats. Well, Kentucky, they are going to have to impose their will offensively. They're going to set some of their formations in their scheme to limit what Western Kentucky can do defensively. They have got to, Western Kentucky has nothing to lose. Uh, Kentucky wants to go ahead and dictate what they want to do and then stop Rainey. Rainey was the guy, Bobby Rainey was the man that accounted for two thirds of the offense last week. They're going to stop him today and let somebody else beat them. Tony Sasheries makes everything taste great. Jake's back to pass, fires underneath, it's complete to the tight end. And that is a first down pickup for the Hilltoppers to Tristan Jones. And let's check in with Allison Williams down on the sideline. Guys, tonight the home debut for UK head football coach Joker Phillips and Operation Win. It's a team initiative he started to win in the community, win in the classroom, and of course, win on the field. It's something the team has embraced, the community embraced, and now it seems wherever you see UK football, you see those two words, including on these playing cards, the UK football playing cards, and on the picture for the Joker, of course, the picture of Joker Phillips. And that, guys, I have a feeling that he has UK fans feeling pretty good about the cards they've been dealt because they're playing with the Joker. Matt, Chris? Uh, all right, Al. Hold on to those cards. We have a big poker game tonight. I after like the, it. Yeah. Man down on the field was Tristan Jones, who made the first down grab, just his second catch of the year. The junior out of Mount Sterling, Kentucky, down on the field after making that first down grab. Looks like it might be a cramp as they're dealing with his left leg. So we'll take a break, step away as they deal with Tristan Jones just underway at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky. Jones is helped to the sideline and unfortunately upon further review it looks like it's probably a little bit worse than a cramp right now, Chris. Yeah, that's the last thing you want to see here and the first play of the game offensively early, make a catch, and then uh, look like he tweaked the ankle a little bit there. Got rolled up on. Perhaps he, uh, last thing you want to do though is come out here with all that excitement and, and have your night end uh, early like that. We wish him the best of luck and get back quickly. Well, two plays and a first down for the Hilltoppers as they now have it at the 40 yard line. Their own 40 yard line as they line up in the I formation. Rainey the tailback and Johnson the fullback lining up in front of him. Rainey getting the toss, gets a block from Johnson, and it is a nice one as Rainey picks up the first down and more. Rainey, touchdown! As I mentioned off to the top there, if Western Kentucky University is going to have a chance tonight, they got to make big plays. No better guy to make that big play than Bobby Rainey. You saw the receiver come in and crack on the end, and they just sealed the outside. Nobody left in the secondary there after you beat the first level. Bobby Rainey not to be caught. Touchdown for the Hilltoppers. Casey Tinius on for the PAT. In just one minute and 13 seconds into this ball game, Western Kentucky strikes a bolt of lightning named Bobby Rainey, a 59-yard run down the sideline, and the Hilltoppers have a 7-0 lead. Watch number 27, Rod Johnson, the fullback, great block, and then a super block by the tackle number 68, Preston King, to spring that run. Not a better way for them to start. They talked about coming out of the gates, making plays early. That gives them a lot of confidence. They felt like they're the little brother here being disrespected by Kentucky. They want to prove that they're equals. Western Kentucky with the nation's longest losing streak, 21 games. Willie Taggart says, look, we're 0-1. We're not talking about the 21-game losing streak because there's nothing we could do about it. If talking about it would make it go away, we'd talk about it but we're choosing to ignore it and look ahead to the future. I really like the way Willie Taggart has taken over this program. He said, look, we got nowhere to go from up, but up from here, they feel like they're making some inroads, being able to recruit against some of the big boys, but it's gonna take winning on the field to be able to recruit the kind of players that they want to to get to the next level. But now they've got to kick the ball to the dangerous duo that we showed you off the top, Derek Locke and Randall Cobb standing deep for the Wildcats, two of the most dynamic multi-faceted all-purpose players in the nation wearing Kentucky blue 
Locke with 4-2-1 speed in the 40. Hendricks Brakefield will kick off for the Hilltoppers who are enjoying their first lead of the season. A little pooch kick and a fair catch is called for at the 34-yard line, and that's where the Wildcats will go on offense for the first time tonight. Let's check in with Allison Williams. And talking to some of the Western Kentucky University players yesterday, they know how they're perceived. They understand that they are the underdogs in this state, that they are looked at as the little brothers. And they said, you know what? Sometimes the little brother has to grow up, and sometimes he grows up to be bigger than the big brother. That's what they want to do. Also for these guys, this is about getting respect on their own campus. They said, we have UK fans in our classes. They're sick of seeing that. They want to see more red on their own campus. They're out to prove to everybody at Western Kentucky University they are a team to cheer for, guys. Mike Hartline on the pass to the tight end on Miller. And on Miller, a first down at the 48-yard line. Ryan Beard making the tackle from the safety position for the Hilltoppers. Kentucky coach is very excited about the future of that position. Tight ends are very young. They like all Miller. They like Robinson, the true freshman. Those guys are going to be guys that are really going to be able to contribute. These are valuable reps that they're getting now before they get into the SEC season. Nick Melillo, the projected starter at that position, still out with an injury suffered in preseason camp. Pass is thrown complete across the 50-yard line, complete to LaRod King, Chris Bullard, the corner, making the stop. You know, these guys, Western Kentucky University, they're not going to be afraid of Kentucky. It, they have played SEC teams for the last the sixth time that they've played them in the last six seasons. So they've played against the speed of the SEC before they feel like they can compete. And there you saw the cornerback coming up and closing quickly, uh, limiting them to about a five-yard gain. Second down and a long four now. They're going to run a reverse. Randall Cobb, first time he's touched the ball, picks up a first down as Cobb gets down to the 39-yard line. You're going to see Randall Cobb get the ball in a number of different ways tonight. He's a guy that can line up at center, play quarterback. He'll get the ball down the field, passing it. He'll come get it off of the reverse. You'll even see him tonight returning punts and kicks. And even, how about holding, man? That's the thing that I think is the most impressive. He is the holder for this Kentucky Wildcats special teams unit. Rushed for 80 yards against Louisville last week, including a 51-yard run. That's Allen, the fullback, in motion behind the line. Derek Locke, his first touch of the night, with Allen blocking for him. And Locke runs out of real estate over here on the near sideline. And a first down for the Wildcats as they get it inside the 20. Pretty formidable look right there if you're a Hilltopper defender. You see Monsell Allen, the fullback, leading the way. And this is a guy that Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, likes an awful lot. They say he can make plays down the field, blocking for this talented running back crew that they have in Kentucky. But they're only going to use him in a limited amount of ways. You know, they're not going to allow him to fire the gun too often and use him up like you see so many fullbacks getting used up. That was a 22-yard pickup to the 17-yard line. Lott goes to the other side and not as much running room this time for Derek Lott as he gets inside the 15. Jamarcus Allen, the nose tackle, making the stop after a five-yard gain. One thing you'll see a lot tonight is these receivers of Kentucky. They are very physical, very big guys. They've emphasized blocking downfield, opening up running lanes for the ball carriers. So let's keep an eye on those guys as they take great pride in blocking downfield. Locke went for 104 yards and two touchdowns in the victory over the Cardinals last week at Papa John Stadium up in Louisville. Locke again right up the middle. Inside the 10, stopped at the 9. Thomas Majors, the leading tackler on this Western Kentucky University team making the stop. Led the Hilltoppers with 101 total tackles a year ago, playing his second season is number six after transferring in from Northwest Mississippi Community College, but he's a native of nearby Nashville. Third down and two coming up for the Wildcats as the ball is at the nine yard line, just under 11 minutes to play here in the first quarter. Seventh play of the drive after the Hilltoppers scored on three plays off of their first possession. Lock, pitch, and will be stopped short of the first down by Ramel Lewis. Looked like Kentucky had enough guys out in front. You see big Stuart Hines, the best, uh, the leader on that offensive line, 
trying to kick out and create a seam, but uh, good pursuit by the Hilltoppers. Looks like uh, Kentucky's gonna go for it here. A lot of confidence in this offensive line. Yeah, fourth down and one, they're going for it. Only one returning starter on the offensive line this year, Stuart Hines, as you mentioned. Junior out of Bowling Green High School, the only member of the Wildcats team from the hometown of the Hilltoppers. Keeper Cobb on the wild Cobb inside the five and down to the two and a half. We asked Randy Sanders yesterday, do you have a certain preference of when you go to the wild Cobb? He said, look, it's just a feeling thing. We like to go ahead and match it up to get a hat on a hat. Short yardage goal line situations are ideal for that. The first fourth down try, they go to the wild Cobb and pick it up. Randall Cobb with 25 career touchdowns needs just two to become second on the Wildcats all-time list. He'll stay in there in the Wild Cobb. That's right, not Wildcat, but Wild Cobb formation for the Wildcats. Keeper again. And stopped inside the one-yard line. To elaborate on that point that I've made, one reason that you go to the Wild Cobb there is because you have to make the defense commit to whether they're going to stack the box to try to stop the run and leave guys singled up on the outside or you play it straight up like you normally would and worry about Randall Cobb and his ability to run the football. Randall Cobb, dynamic young man, was a star quarterback at Alcoa, Tennessee High School. Quarterback for two of their four consecutive state championship teams. Hartline now back in there at quarterback. Robinson the tight end in motion. Locked the handoff. Did not get it. Bo Adebayo making the stop. Number 90, the backup defensive end. Ryan Beard did a great job of coming up. Good penetration by the Hilltopper defense there as well. One thing that Randy Sanders said is they have a very stout defensive line. Those guys hold up well. We'll have to play very hard on offense if we're going to be able to stop that defensive line that the Hilltoppers have. Chris, point of emphasis for Western Kentucky University in practice this week, tackling. Willie Taggart upset by the lack of tackling in the loss to Nebraska. Fade route to the corner, jump ball. Chris Matthews wins it, touchdown. A bunch of big wide receivers for the Wildcats, and Matthews another one of them at 6'5", 219. That's why you recruit big receivers. The ability to go up and get the ball even when you're covered, and Matthews is one of the best at using his body to out-jump the defender there. You can have great coverage, but when you're six foot five and can go get it at the top of the, the height of the, the flight, very little chance for the defender to stop it. Titlachka on for the PAT, missed one a week ago. Good on this one. One thing we talked to yesterday about uh, with Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, they want to recruit big guys. They want to have physical receivers. Give them a chance on the outside to make plays. Rainy for most of the afternoon here in Lexington, Kentucky, but the skies have cleared. It is a beautiful night. Western Kentucky University and Kentucky tied at seven here in the opening seven minutes of this ball game. Great start, Chris. Yeah, couldn't be a better start here. Nice drive there. Early. I don't even know if you can call it a drive by the Hilltoppers. Big play that got them into the end zone by Bobby Rainey, and then Kentucky puts together a nice answer to tie the game up here. We'll see if uh, if the Hilltoppers can go back and continue some momentum that they created early. Willie McNeil, the red shirt freshman out of Bradenton, Florida, standing deep for the Hilltoppers. You hear Bradenton, Florida, trust me, that Willie Taggart, who's from Manatee, Florida, wants to get a bunch of Florida guys here as he starts building this program. McNeil will not return this one, and wisely, slow, wisely so, as the Hilltoppers will take it at the 20-yard line. Time now to take a look at our Cooks Pest Control home turf advantage. And here it is, Kentucky has won 14 straight games versus non-conference opponents since 2006, including a 41-3 victory over the Hilltoppers here in 2008. Upgrade your home's termite protection to the unbeatable combination Cooks, Pest Control, and Centricon. So a chance to see the Hilltoppers on offense for the second time tonight. They felt confident that they could run the ball against Kentucky because they did it against Nebraska last week. Nebraska, who a year ago was the number nine ranked defense against the rush, and Rainey gets the ball again. Rainey has had success, Chris, against the Wildcats before two years ago as a freshman carried the ball nine times 
for 99 yards and had 256 all-purpose yards against the Wildcats in that loss. He is the bell cow for this Hilltopper offense. Last week got 30 carries, probably a little bit more than they wanted to give him, but they had some success. They ran a lot of power running game in the second half, and uh, they look forward to continuing that tonight against Kentucky. Second down and seven. Cooper and Vasquez split out, and that's the tight end that they throw to right there, Jack Doyle, and he's close to a first down. That's the second time they've gone to the tight end. Tristan Jones, who unfortunately got hurt on the first possession, and then Jack Doyle, second time they've gone to the tight end on second down to get the first down. Well, we talked to Mike Sanford, the passing game coordinator, on Wednesday. He told us Jack Doyle's a guy that has great running uh, blocking ability, but also has great hands. We need to get him involved in the game early, and they've done that tonight already. One pass each for those two tight ends. Mike Sanford, by the way, beaming the former quarterback at Boise State. Man, he was feeling it this week <laughs> when we talked to him after the Cowboys' big win over Virginia Tech on Monday. And, of course, Virginia Tech upset today by James Madison as Rainey right up the middle. Not a whole lot doing on that first down carry. Dante Rump, true freshman, making the tackle for the Wildcats, the only true freshman to make it into the lineup at the line of scrimmage, they had other guys on special teams, but the only guy playing offense or defense a week ago. Rump's a guy that they're excited to have here. He initially signed with this team two years ago, has had to go to uh, military school to become eligible, and finally out here, the, I know the rest of the Kentucky guys on defense are happy to have him. 6 3 3 0 5. They're having to replace all SEC defensive tackle Corey Peters, one of four players that were all SEC that graduated off of last year's team. Jake's to pass and in and out of the hands of Marcus Vasquez. Randall Burden, the returning starter at cornerback, was closing fast. Dangerous pass there for uh, Jake's throwing back across the field. I know that's uh, something that they talked about was Jake's making good decisions there, but that nearly picked and gone the other way. This is the first third down coming up for the Hilltoppers. Scored on three plays the first time they had the ball. Of course, the big 59-yard run by Bobby Rainey. Willie Taggart getting used to life on the sidelines. He's used to being up in the box. It's been an adjustment for him here as Jakes stands in the pocket. It breaks down. McDermott was giving him heavy pressure. Someone tipped the ball at the line of scrimmage, and it's fourth down. Shane McCord, the defensive tackle, was the guy who batted it. You mentioned Luke McDermott. I love this kid. He's a walk-on. He's elevated to a starter this year. You see him coming free up the middle and putting some pressure on Jakes at defensive front for Kentucky. Caused uh, the Hilltopper coaches to be very worried about holding up tonight, giving Jake some time to throw the football. Randall Cobb standing deep for the Kentucky Wildcats back at his 30-yard line. Breakfield on the punt, averaged 37 yards a kick on eight attempts a week ago against Nebraska. They kick it away from Cobb, and wisely so, as it rolls dead at the 36-yard line, and that's where the Wildcats will go on the field for their second possession when we get back with under six to play in the quarter, tied at seven. to play in the opening quarter. Western Kentucky University and Kentucky tied at seven. Hilltoppers scored off their first three plays, a 59-yard touchdown run by Bobby Rainey. Kentucky came back with an 11-play drive that went 66 yards, capped on a two-yard pass from Hartline to Matthews. Matthews, one of three wide receivers that Hartline connected with on that first drive. First and 10 now from the 35-yard line. Pass thrown complete to Randall Cobb with Locke blocking for him. Picks up about six or seven on the play as they get it up to the 42-yard line. Don't miss live SEC football on CSS presented by Regions Bank all season long. If you don't have CSS, contact your local cable provider today to get more live SEC sports, including football, basketball, baseball, and more. Second down and four. Allen, the fullback, leading the way for Locke. And close to a first down at the 46-yard line. Chris, let's take a look at the SEC scores from today. 
in games that are currently in progress. Of course, the Auburn-Mississippi State game, that was Thursday. Bama's got a two-touchdown lead on Penn State. South Carolina shut down Georgia, Arkansas, and Monroe just underway. Tennessee and Oregon, of course, in a delay. And I saved the best for last for you, Chris, as Florida finally got their offense going in that second half and beat the Bulls. Florida looked terrible there in the first half, put something together. But I tell you what, it's my old coach, Coach Furrier, that had the impressive win in the East today with a big win over Georgia. Hartline back to pass, steps up in the pocket. He's going to be sacked. Jared Clendenin, number five, the defensive end out of Atlanta, Georgia. Making the stop and a loss for the Wildcats on first down. Defensive coordinator Clint Bowen mentioned Clendenin as being a leader on this team during the offseason. They've had to try to convince these guys to change their mentality. He's been a big leader along with Thomas Majors. Those guys will have to have big nights for this defense to have some success. Clendenin, 40 tackles a year ago. One sack out of high school powerhouse Stevenson High School there in Stone Mountain, Georgia, which of course is a suburb of Atlanta. Hartline throwing complete the lock and lock up to the 50-yard line. Getting out of the tackle with Darius Brooks, but not far enough to advance the ball any further. You saw lock lined up outside. That's something you'll see tonight a lot from this Wildcat offense. They feel like he's a good enough athlete out in space to have create matchup problems in the secondary. He can catch the ball. He runs work routes well, so look for him to be a guy that we see outside quite a bit this evening. Matthews Cobb split out to the top of your screen, and so does Allen, the fullback, lining up, actually Locke lining up in the slot. A different look here, Chris, for the Wildcats. And they go to Locke on the tunnel screen. And shy of the first down at the 47-yard line. Nice, nice tackle by the linebacker, Chris Bullard. Nice stop there by the Hilltoppers. That's what they need to do on defense, create some momentum. Coach Taggart kind of critical of the way that those guys played last week. They said they were a little hesitant when it came to tackling. They were in the right spot, but they simplified the offense this week. They hit a lot during, or simplified the defense, hit a lot during scout team to convince these guys to finish plays. There they did a nice job finishing that, finishing the drive for the Cats. Tidlachka on the punt for the Wildcats. It's going to sail over the head of McNeil and into the end zone about nine yards deep. So. An ineffective punt there for the Wildcats. A 47-yard kick, but you knock 20 off, so really a 27-yard kick is your net after you kick the ball into the end zone, so the Hilltoppers will bring it out to the 20-yard line. 2.47 left here in the first quarter. I don't think any of us would have thought it would have been a 7-7 ball game, but a lot of credit to this coaching staff of Western Kentucky University. The players playing with a lot of confidence, and I think that, like we talked about in the open, Willie Taggart just trying to convince these guys to do things differently he had a lot of success here as a player. I think it's easy for these guys to follow him because of his resume as a player. First and 10, ball is at the 20-yard line. And a flag is dropped on the field. Our referee tonight is Penn Wagers. Veteran crew working this ball game tonight in Lexington, Kentucky. Prior to the snap, false start, tight end, penalty five yards. Now remains perfect. Five yard mark off against the Hilltoppers. Chris, today is the birthday of Paul Bear Bryant. He would have been 97 years old today. Of course, everybody knows of his legacy at the University of Alabama. Some people forget that he actually cut his teeth here at Kentucky from 1946 to 53. And Joker Phillips tonight trying to get a victory and join Bear Bryant as the only first-year coaches ever to start 2-0 at Kentucky. Hard to believe that no other coaches since Bear Bryant was here back in the early 50s has been able to start 2-0. Obviously, big win last week over Louisville. Coach Strong has uh, got that program, hopefully headed in the right direction. But uh, Kentucky, obviously, the big brother within the state right now. They're trying to win the state championship tonight with a victory over Western Kentucky University. You see number 24, Randall Burden. He was the guy who made the fine tackle on Bobby Rainey, dropping the Hilltoppers for a loss, furthering, furthering deepening, deepening their hole as they were first and 15. They are now second and 16 as the ball is back at the 14-yard line. Jakes, first time we've seen K1 Jakes run the ball and he gets the ball up close to the original line of scrimmage before being 
tackled by the middle linebacker, Ronnie Sneed. Jake's not a guy that necessarily wants to run the ball. He wants to be known more as a passer, but he will run when necessary. It's a good change up every once in a while, but he certainly is more of a pocket passer in this West Coast style offense than what we typically would see out of a guy that's as athletic as Kawan Chase is. Third down and 11 for Willie Taggart's team. They came out and threw the first punch and grabbed the lead. But now they've got to convert on a long third down situation right here. Jake's heavy rush. Ball is intercepted. Luke McDermott, the young man you were talking about just a few moments ago, Chris, got a gift threw it right to him. They talked about McDermott being a guy that outworks everybody else, studies hard, is always in the right place at the right time. You see the Kentucky defense bringing some pressure off the edge. That's to Quinn Evans forcing him to throw the ball under duress and McDermott making a nice play for a guy with uh, a little bit more weight than what us, you know, <laughs> typically uh, receiver type guys would have. 6'1", 265. Yes, he is bigger than your typical receiver. You see Willie Taggart talking to K1 Jakes. They were trying to run a bubble screen or a tunnel screen inside there and McDermott got in the passing lane and now a golden opportunity for the Wildcats to grab their first lead of the contest. Lock stopped in the middle. Let's check in with Allison Williams. Guys, the Hilltoppers are going to have to continue to play strong and physical on defense, and that was what they emphasized all week. Defensive coordinator Clip Bowen said we played it almost live. We had guys hitting the week leading up to this game because during that game against Nebraska, they just didn't have the courage they needed to have at the point of impact. So the emphasis this week was to hit as hard as you can, to run through tackles with authority, and a big emphasis on getting their face on people. They've done that so far tonight. They're really going to need to now. Guys. Yeah, they've got their backs up against their goal line right now. They show blitz and then step out of it. Down to three on the play clock as Hartline rolls to his left. Hartline doesn't usually run the ball, dives for the pylon, and gets in for the touchdown. Mike Hartline with his first rushing touchdown of the season gives Kentucky the lead. Matt, that was a design run from the get-go. You'll see LaRod King out in front. Picking up a block there for Mike Hartline. He's not the most nimble, swiftest of foot guy. But obviously enough from King there on the edge to get him to the corner. You saw LaRod King, number 16, who you pointed out, out there. Wasn't a great block, but it was enough to get Hartline around the edge. And it is 13 to 7. All you got to do is get in the guy's way and allow your runner to make a play, make a move off of your block. And I believe this ball is going to be reviewed. This touchdown is going to be reviewed as they call up to the booth. Robert Rougeau is going to take a look at it. Can't take away Mike Hartline's running, rushing touchdown there. That's, you know, that's, that's a point of pride if you're a, a passer like he is. Here's another look at it from the opposite end zone. There's 16, LaRod King with the block, and... Watch the knee. I think he's out of bounds. They're going to have to take it away from him. You need him. to see the, <laughs> see the other view and see if he got the ball across the plane before his knee made it to the sideline. Looks like he's going to be a little short there, Matt. Yeah, I think they're going to bring that back if the uh, replay officials are able to see the same thing that we are seeing. It looks like the knee slides out of bounds before the ball breaks the plane of the goal, and Hartline and Deeb will have that touchdown the brought back. The important thing is it's got to be indisputable visual evidence, so they have to have something that definitely shows him being out of bounds prior to the ball crossing the... Well, Penn Wagers just informed the crowd here at Commonwealth Stadium that the ruling on the field stands, which is touchdown for Mike Hartline, uh, and I think it goes back to exactly what you were saying. You've got to have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call, and they didn't feel like they had that. I think if they would have called it down there on the one-yard line and, and reviewed it, probably wouldn't have been able to overturn that as well. Tidlachka, PAT is good. And with 25 seconds to play here in the first quarter, the Kentucky Wildcats have taken their first lead now on top, 14-7. You know, and Mike Hartline is a guy that everybody, I think, just kind of assumed was going to be the starting quarterback. But Joker Phillips did not announce that until pretty late into preseason camp. 
uh, even though Hartline in his mind was clearly the front runner coming out of spring ball. But it was really the first time since Hartline had been here that he had competition for the job from Morgan Newton and Ryan Mosikowski. Yeah, as a sophomore, he was given the job after the starter was kicked off the team. Last year, Hartline competed against two true freshmen that really didn't have a chance. And then going into the spring this year, Hartline knew he was in a battle with Morgan Newton and Ryan Mosikowski. I'm sorry. Masakowski, and uh, I think that competition is exactly what the Wildcats need, not only at the quarterback position, but at all of their positions. They've elevated Mike Hartline's game. He's the guy that created more tempo with, when he was in the game on offense. The players seem to rally around him. They've noticed a bigger amount of confidence. He said, uh, we talked to Randall Cobb yesterday, he said that he's giving them more opportunities. The chemistry that they developed together in the offseason has certainly paid off early in the year for them. Mansoor, short kick taken by Vasquez at the 12 yard line. Marcus Vasquez down at the 26, and that's where the Hilltoppers go back on offense for the fourth time. They came out all guns a blazing on that opening possession, but they've had to punt it once, and then they lost the ball on an interception on the next possession. Look for the Hilltoppers to take a shot here early in the down, see if they can hit one over the top. Last week, Nebraska played with two safeties almost the entire game. That's why they had so much success running the ball. But this Kentucky secondary likes to get their safeties involved in run support. Mike Sanford told us they got to take some shots over the top if those safeties get too nosy down there in the box. Willie Taggart, one of the all-time greats, one of only four players in Hilltopper history to have his jersey retired. Handoff, not much doing for Bobby Rainey. Picked up maybe a yard on the play. So second down and uh, long coming up here for the Hilltoppers, and that was the final play of the first quarter. So an entertaining first 15 minutes from Lexington, Kentucky. Kentucky, their home opener, Willie Taggart's Hilltoppers got a 59-yard run from Bobby Rainey for the early lead, but the Cats have come back to take the advantage. 14-7 as we go to the second quarter. SEC football on CSS is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Call GEICO at 1-800-947-AUTO. That's 1-800-947-AUTO or visit GEICO.com. By Cook's Pest Control. Upgrade your home's termite protection to the unbeatable combination Cook's Pest Control and Centricon. Call Cook's to get a free pest and termite evaluation. And by Bank of America. Back on the campus of the University of Kentucky as night has fallen here on this warm Saturday evening in the Bluegrass State, Kentucky, with a 14-7 lead on Western Kentucky University as we start the second quarter. Matt Stewart, Chris Doring, Allison Williams with you. And thanks for joining us for SEC football presented by Regions Bank. Now you look at the safeties as I talked about getting up there in run support. They're going to have some chances to get the ball over the top in the passing game tonight. Rainey. Two yards on the play up to the 30 yard line. Taylor Wyndham making the tackle. All SEC or all freshman All American a year ago for this Wildcats team, but lost his starting job with had to rehab his shoulder injury in the spring and fell behind Collins Ukwu in the starting position there at defensive end. Really liked our talk yesterday with Steve Brown, the yeah. defensive coordinator for the Kentucky Wildcats. He talked about third downs. They want to try to hold the opposition to 26% or below. They were very good last week against Louisville. Big third down here. Try to keep the offense of Western Kentucky from trying to build any sort of momentum. Hilltoppers 0 of 2 on third downs here tonight. Jakes and play got blown dead. Penalty marker down. The line judge, Paul Prisco is going to step in and drop a flag. Right snap. Ball start. Number 68 on the offense. Penalty five yards. Down remains third. So the penalty goes against the Hilltoppers. Backs them up to the 25-yard line. Not a good way to help convert on third down. As you mentioned, 0-2 to this point in time. Long down and distances on third down is not very conducive for continuing drives. Offense is all about developing rhythm. And the way you develop rhythm 
is by leaving yourself in short third down distances, being able to convert and continue to pick up some momentum on these drives. Bobby Rainey gained 65 yards on his first two carries. He's gotten only eight in his last five as the play gets blown dead and a timeout perhaps called here timeout. by Western Kentucky Western University. Western Kentucky, first timeout of the half. So what has happened with Western Kentucky University since they actually had that big first possession and got the touchdown? They really doesn't seem like they've been able to do anything much with the ball since then. We'll talk about that when we get back early in the second quarter with the Wildcats on top by a touchdown. Wildcats on top in the second quarter back in Lexington. I'm joined by Colonel Jason Cummings, who is head of the ROTC here at University of Kentucky. And Colonel, I know you have a special relationship with head coach Joker Phillips because of Operation Win. Right. Uh, shortly after he was named head coach and he, he launched Operation Win, we invited him to come down and run with the battalion. And in the course of doing so, uh, we took and uh, spent a little time together talking over leadership philosophies. And uh, I asked him how he came up with Operation Win. And he said, well, I've always respected the military and their disciplined approach to practice and training. And, uh, and he was a little afraid it may offend us. Uh, and I pointed to a flag up on the wall from Operation en Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan, another flag from a campaign we did in Iraq and uh, Iraqi Freedom, and told him, hey, we're all about operations uh, and we'd love to, uh, to partner with you in this effort. And you feel like you guys share a lot of the same principles, the, right, the same ideals, right? Absolutely. The discipline approach uh, to, to training uh, and the fact that, you know, the more and the harder you work in the offseason, the more you prepare and the more disciplined you are in that approach, uh, the more successful you'll be. And, Colonel, I'm sure this was kind of a special day for you, a bit of a somber day for our country, the ninth anniversary of 9-11. As you were here, they have the moment of silence before the national anthem. What were you feeling? I think... Uh, just like all Americans, you know, it's a time to reflect uh, on that, that day and what it means to each one of us. Uh, for all of us, it's a, a special day. And, and any time we can come together as a nation and really remember um, what that day means and, uh, and what it's meant since then is very important for us. So it was nice. Colonel, thanks so much for Thank your time. You, I appreciate it. Matt, Chris, back up to you. Thank you, Allison, and our heartfelt gratitude to the military and all those who have sacrificed their time and, most importantly, their lives since 9-11, nine years ago, and the flags flying at half mass here today across the country and at Commonwealth Stadium. Brakefield gets the punt away, taken by Cobb at the 50-yard line. Randall Cobb right up the middle. To the outside. There he goes. Touchdown, Randall Cobb. 50 yards on the return, and it's 20-7. Talked about that dynamic duo for the Kentucky Wildcats. Locke and Cobb have been big so far in this football game. Cobb does it all on offense, special teams there in the punt return game. I'm not a big fan of the rugby style kicks. Very low line drive. It was tough for the Kentucky or Western Kentucky University cover team to get down there. Locke, Cobb made one move and went up the field, hit it for a touchdown. As Talked about before, his success will dictate the success of this Kentucky team. Todd Litchko on for the kick. And the PAT by Tidlachka is good, and it's 21 to 7. A 50 yard return by Randall Cobb. Cobb with his 26th career touchdown gives the Wildcats a two touchdown lead. Two minutes and 13 seconds into the second quarter, and just like that, the Kentucky Wildcats have bolted out to a 14. Duke blue, baby blue, true blue, and even just plain old regular blue. But no matter what colors you root for, there are just as many you're rooting against. ESPNU, football, basketball, and lacrosse games and college championships. Never graduate. Pocket was breaking down, nearly intercepted by Danny Trevathan. And there's a flag down on the field, a holding penalty here against Western Kentucky. We'll see if they elect to decline holding. that. Having gotten the Number 76 on the offense. The penalty declined. Fourth down. 
And that was the first time tonight that we had called Danny Trevathan's name, the leading tackler and current SEC Defensive Player of the Week, wearing number 13 tonight instead of his typical number 22. That's in honor of Gene McCaskill, the senior wide receiver who injured his knee in preseason practice and is not able to play this year. Yeah, you can tell. I, I believe Chris Matthews wore that 13 last week against Louisville. These guys very disappointed to not have him out there. He's a guy that Randy Sanders talked to us about. You lose him, you lose. it's like losing four guys because he played all four wide receiver slots. That's their tribute to him tonight, and hopefully they'll wear that number with pride. Rugby-style kick taken by Cobb at the 27-yard line. Let's go down on the sideline. Allison Williams has found a very special guest. That Allison, who you got? Well, Matt, someone who needs no introduction here in Big Blue Country, one of the greats to play in this University of Kentucky basketball program, Rajon Rondo, now with the Boston Celtics. Rajon, kind of nice to be back in Lexington? Definitely. Uh, definitely give her a warm welcome. Her, so I'm coming back to Lexington. A little bit I want to get your thoughts on Coach Calipari. He'll be entering his second season in charge of this U.K. basketball team. Um, one of the best recruiting coaches of all time. Uh, he's definitely got some great players coming in again this year as well. So looking forward to a great season. Did you get to many football games when you were at school here? I did. I came to a couple uh, when I had time, especially with the recruits coming in. We, we wanted to come to a football game and show them how it's done here in Kentucky. Everybody talks about this being basketball country, this being a basketball school. Do you think it can become a football school? There's a pretty good turnout here tonight. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the fans are great here. Uh, every time I come back, it's, it's usually 70 plus thousand. Um, I don't know exactly how many it hosts, but um, today the, the team is performing very well. Uh, I know a couple of players uh, that I watched uh, last week against Louisville, so very excited to be here tonight and actually on the field watching these guys play. All right, and lastly, I know you have a lot of them, but what's your best memory from playing here at Kentucky? Probably the South Carolina game <laughs> when I hit the game winning three, so uh, that, that stands out, but I had a great career here. Um, played with a bunch of great guys. I keep in contact still today, so uh, it's a great place to play. Rajan, thanks so much, and best of luck next season with the South. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. You talk about a guy who blew up when he got to the association, Rajon Rondo. And how about a guy who just blew up on that play, that spin move by Derek Locke, Chris? Yeah, we see the power running early from Derek Locke there, the nimbleness with the nice spin move. I think you and I both looked at each other. Wow. That was nasty. Ball is down inside the 50-yard line, now at the 45. Hartline with a block from Locke. And complete to LaRod King. Now that's a great example right there. You just saw the great run by Derek Locke, and then he's in pass pro. Yeah, and he does it all for this Kentucky Wildcat offense. You see him as a guy that can line up in space, he can run routes, he can carry the ball out of the backfield, but sometimes it's that picking up the, the blitzer, picking up some rushers there that goes unnoticed. Uh, certainly as a wide receiver, you appreciate those guys that are back there allowing the quarterback to get the ball off. Second down and five, ball at the 40. Hartline standing in, going deep. There's contact over on the sideline, and no flag is dropped. They were trying to get it to lock. Chris Bullard, the Sam linebacker, running step for step with him. And uh, what do you think, Chris? Oh, the Rod King getting a blow in there. I don't know if that's legal or not, but uh, <laughs> nice, nice contact. They talked about being more physical, and certainly it displayed it right there. So now it's going to be third down and five. Kentucky, one of three on their thirds so far in this ball game. Hartline to his left and on the move, throwing to Cobb for a first down. First or second third down conversion for the Wildcats. And Cobb, Randall Cobb just, you know, Look at the physical nature of Cobb just to shrug off the defender. Yeah, he's a uh, bigger guy than what you might expect. Uh, after talking to him yesterday, uh, he's only 5'10", but he's got some size, got some strength to him there. Nice play call by Randy Sanders as well. Getting the pocket outside and getting a little bit of uh, a little bit of a rub there. It's not called a pick, a little rub from Randall Cobb. So first and 10, Robinson the tight end behind the mo in motion behind the line. First carry of the night for Donald Russell. And Russell just a couple on the play. Chris Bullard making the tackle. And stick around coming up at halftime. The Polaris halftime report. And we'll take a look at Vanderbilt and Tennessee Wire. That's head coach Robbie Caldwell and Derek Dooley. A look inside their practice and moving the chains with Bob Neal. And of course, first half highlights and stats all coming up in the Polaris halftime report. 
the hardest working, smoothest riding off-road vehicles. See them at your local dealer or visit PolarisIndustries.com. Second down and seven, ball at the 32-yard line. Russell, back-to-back -back carries. Mark Santoro, the strong safety coming up to make the stop for the Hilltoppers, but it is downfield near the sticks and a third and short coming up for Kentucky. And Matt, we talked earlier about what Derek Locke and Randall Cobb have done for the recruiting effort of Kentucky. I've never, I've always wondered why they haven't been able to put a more consistent, more quality product out on the field. They got great facilities. Mm -hmm. They got great fan support. They, they, they continue to be able to be on the cusp. I think this is their year with some of the you know, even this in the SEC East, they got a chance to compete for an for East title. How about Monsell Allen getting the payoff? Every once in a while, you have to reward the fullback for his blocking. And Allen, a tailback, prior to becoming a fullback this spring, with the big carry of the first down. Exactly. You look at the big fella right there picking up the necessary yardage. But, you know, this is going to become fullback university yeah. with all of the notoriety that John Connor has gotten from hard knocks now. Monsell Allen picking up right where Connor left off. So first and 10 now, the ball at the 23-yard line. You got to say it right. That's John Connor. <laughs> the Terminator. They nicknamed Monsell the Turtle Nader. Inside the 20-yard line, down to the 17-yard line. Clint Bowen, the defensive coordinator for Western Kentucky, they had another name for him. They called him the ACL killer because he's so low to the ground. He's a beast, and that's exactly the kind of build you want for your fullback at 5'7", 232. We were walking around down on the field early before the game, and the players didn't have their jerseys on at that point in time. Not hard to pick out which one Monsell Adam was with that body type. Second down and six now. Ball at the 17 and a half. Toss to Locke, Lock, spin move, and got extra yardage. That's a nice play by Derek Locke. Looked like he was going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. He was able to battle forward and get a couple of yards on the play. That's the old truck play there. You see down blocking from Randall Cobb. He talked about the one area he wanted to improve upon was his downfield blocking, being a little bit more physical. He's the guy that allowed Locke to get the lane there and leave him in third and short. Ironically, it is because of that blocking that he says he has improved on that he, for the first time in his career, he feels like a bona fide wide receiver. And Cobb throws the ball complete. Allen, touchdown. Randall Cobb has scored a touchdown on a punt return. He's now thrown a touchdown pass, and it's 34 to 7. Randall Cobb is a very, very impressive player here in person. Watch him on TV, watch him in the past on the film. You see Randall Cobb. They're not afraid to give him the opportunity to throw the football because of the success that he's had playing the position in the past there. Monsell Allen, we talked about him earlier, being a guy that can run the football but has great hands. They have confidence in throwing in the football down the field. Ted Lachka on for the PAT, and that's Cobb that is holding. The only thing he has not done tonight is hawk popcorn up and down the aisles here to the fans. Not he yet. gets it all done, doesn't he? They get another touchdown here. He might be out there, though. Look at this. Great. High snap, no problem for Cobb. He doesn't panic, dumps it off to Monsell Allen. Back in 08, Allen had his first touchdown catch against these Hilltoppers, first career touchdown catch. Gets one here tonight as the Wildcats have expanded their lead to four touchdowns. We talked about Randall Cobb being the holder there. He told us a story about his sophomore year in high school. Tore his hamstring right off of the bone. Couldn't do anything, but the coach made him dress out and made him hobble out to hold every time because they didn't have anybody else to do that job. I'm a guy that once I got to the NFL, they tried to convince me that I needed to hold as well. It's a tough job, a lot of pressure, so I give him a lot of credit. Randall Cobb is a bona fide star. We've seen a number of different looks from this Kentucky offense tonight, and you might ask, why are you doing different things against a team that obviously seems to be an overmatched opponent? In a couple of weeks, though, they travel to the Swamp to play your team. Yeah, everybody's aware of what Randall Cobb can do, but by putting him out here on some tape, that makes teams like Florida and some of their upcoming opponents within the SEC have to prepare. There's only a couple 
a limited amount of reps that you get during practice to prepare for an upcoming opponent. If you make him worry about the wild cob, make him worry about him throwing, make him worry about him running, you're taking away from the focus on the rest of the stuff that Kentucky does. Looks like he's having a good time. I'm having a good time watching him play, that's for sure. He has been worth the price of admission here for the crowd here at Commonwealth Stadium. McNeil has trouble. Maybe it was the smog from the fireworks that got to him right there. But again, a nice return by McNeil. There he goes. It is a sprint to the end zone that McNeil will win. Chris, that is the second time we've seen on a kickoff, McNeil kind of bobble the ball, and that throws the timing off of the kickoff return coverage. It throws the timing off, but those guys also got out of their lanes. What you saw was everybody trying to converge to the ball rather than being disciplined and staying in your cover lanes. And you're right, though, the timing thrown off for the second time. He had a big return that got called back earlier because of a hole. This one clean and another big play for Western Kentucky. The two scores tonight have been both over 50 yards. That's what they have to do in order to compete. Tenney is on for the PAT, and he pops it through. It is now 35 to 14. Tough night for the Hilltoppers, but they've had a couple of big highlights that they can take back and watch. Willie McNeil, 89-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, and of course the 59-yard touchdown run by Bobby Rainey early in the ball game. Willie McNeil is kind of like the, uh, the 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 copied version for Western Kentucky of what Randall Cobb is for Kentucky. He's a guy they throw the ball to. He's a guy that carries it as well. He got four carries last week against Nebraska, and then there on the kickoff return, you see his speed and breakaway ability. This is a guy that they talked about we, when we talked to. Steve Brown, the defensive coordinator, about having to be aware for where he is on the football field. You see his athleticism, only a freshman, and as you mentioned, out of Bradenton. I know that Willie Taggart, very proud of what somebody from his hometown there is representing tonight out here on the football field. Willie Taggart was a star quarterback at Manatee High School, led them to the state championship game in his career there. and came to Western Kentucky. He was actually recruited by Jim Harbaugh to play for Jim's father, Jack, who was the successful head coach of the Hilltoppers, set 11 school records there, still holds school records in rushing yardage. Actually, he's number two on the rushing yardage total now, but he's still their all-time leader in rushing touchdowns, over 7,000 yards of total offense for Willie Taggart in his career for the Hilltoppers, and later, he was the co-offensive coordinator in 2002 when the Hilltoppers won what, what, what was then called the Division I AA National Champion. You mentioned Jim Harbaugh. I played with Jim Harbaugh in Indianapolis when he was serving as a volunteer coach for his father. Uh, obviously did a great job of recruiting Willie Taggart. His offseason home was down in Orlando, so he had the opportunity to see him and ultimately probably one of the best uh, recruiting moves that he's had, at least in his early career. Derek Locke will try to return the favor. Locke still on his feet up to the 41 yard line. Ryan Beard making the special teams tackle 37 yard return for Locke. Tune into Sports Night for extensive football coverage from our pro and NCAA college football experts, including former Green Bay Packers running back Dorsey Levins. Atlanta fullback Ovi Mahaley and veteran sports journalist Steve Weiss plus sports radio personality Chuck Oliver. Sports Night Live weeknights at 6 and 5 Central. So ball at the 42-yard line, 65 seconds left in the half, so still plenty of time for the Wildcats to add to their lead. Hartline going downfield, throws it underneath. That's that Randall Cobb fella again, a first down across midfield. I really like the way that Hartline has stepped up his game from last year. We talked a little bit about how unhappy some of the fans had been, uh, very inconsistent. But I think this offseason, working with a lot of these receivers that have been here, they developed great rhythm together. And I think that that competition, again, we mentioned them, him having to compete really for the first time in his career has ultimately elevated his game. 
First and 10 from the 46 yard line for the Wildcats already leading 35 14 final minute of the first half. That is the tight end all Miller down to the 40 yard line Kareem Peterson the safety making the tackle ball out of bounds stopping the clock with 48 seconds actually did not get out of bounds because the clock is still moving. So second down from the 40. Hartline looking to the near side this time. Ball batted down at the line of scrimmage. Ramil Lewis getting his hands on it. Clock stops, 32 seconds. Randy Sanders has a lot of confidence in Mike Hartline to manage this team on his own. He sends him out to the line of scrimmage with four different plays. They got a, a, a man beater, a zone beater. They got a blitz beater. And in this two-minute situation, what better guy to have out there then a guy that you can trust to call your own plays and get to the line. Make sure your team's in a good play. Third down and four. Ball at the 40-yard line. Hilltoppers crowded the line for a moment. Still crowding with the blitz. And here it comes, bringing pressure on Hartline. Got one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. Jump ball brought down by Chris Matthews at the 10. How about the hands there by Chris Matthews? Did a good job of going up and getting the ball at the peak of its flight. Press coverage on the outside, good release, and then he does a good job of finding the ball. Anytime you got the defensive backs back turned to the quarterback, you got the advantage, and he did a good job of going up and get it at the top of his flight. Hartline taking advantage of man coverage, ball at the 10-yard line, and a timeout has been called with 23 seconds. I think the point you made earlier, though, Chris, was a very valid one in that you get the sense through the first two weeks of the Southeastern Conference season that the Eastern Division, thought to be locked down by the Florida Gators and all the preseason media polls, perhaps is more wide open than yeah. maybe we thought, having watched the Gators maybe struggle through their first two wins, having seen South Carolina defeat Georgia today, and Georgia playing without A.J. Green. Watching Kentucky beat Louisville last week, having their way with Western Kentucky University here tonight, and with great stars like Randall Cobb and Derek Locke, I think the Wildcats are a factor in the Eastern Division. Both of those, you know, you talk about those two teams, this is a perfect year for them to make their ascension from kind of a middle-of-the-pack Eastern team to being able to compete, and you, it, Florida has struggled uh, this year so far. I think it's wide open. Randy Sanders has done a great job with this offense. They are very, very consistent, and that's what gives them a chance to compete in the East this year. Handoff, lock inside the five-yard line. And a timeout called by the Wildcats. That leaves them with one remaining, 16 seconds, so still plenty of time to work with in this short distance situation. Matt, you talked about South Carolina. I thought they did a great job today of being physical. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, that running game is something that probably pained Coach Spurrier to have to continue to hand the ball off and run it there with his uh, you normally liking to throw the ball down the field a lot more, but it is working right now. Steven Garcia has done a good job of managing that offense. Well, I tell you what, having watched Marcus Lattimore, as you take a look at the uh, tight end, Tristan Jones, who was hurt on just the second play of the ball game, being helped off the field, and obviously it is a very severe injury that has him going to the locker room. We are live at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm Matt Stewart along Chris Dorian and Allison Williams down on the sideline. Thanks for joining us. SEC football presented by Regions Bank on CSS Kentucky, the 35-14 lead. But going back to Marcus Lattimore, saw him play for Burns High School the last couple of years, televising games on CSS. This kid was the best running back I saw high school-wise in the nation last two years. I'm not surprised to see him making the impact he's making here in his freshman True year. True freshman. They could not stop him today. He was the difference in that ball game. Second down, goal, heart line. Got a man open, touchdown. LaRod King with the touchdown grab. It is 41 to 14. Matt, nice job there by LaRod King. You get an opportunity to see the slow go, a little slant move, and then go. Sells it well. Easy throw and catch there for Hartline to King. And uh, this offense is rolling here in the first half. Granted, they are playing a Western Kentucky University team that's lost 21 games in a row, but they look good. Don't want to take anything away from what the Wildcats have been able to execute. Tedlachka with the PAT, 11 seconds left in the half. It is 42 to 14. 
When we talked the other day to uh, Clint Bowen, the defensive coordinator at Western Kentucky, he said this offense is not grab bag. It's very simple. They stick to a plan, and they say, hey, look, stop us if you can. Western Kentucky has not been able to do that tonight. Now the question becomes for you, Chris Dory, what do we see from the Wildcats in the second half with the game seemingly firmly in hand? What do they do offensively? Do they continue to show different wrinkles, put things on tape for future Southeastern Conference opponents? No, I think it's an opportunity to get some of your second and third string guys some reps. You'll probably see the starters maybe come out of the locker room, put a drive together, and then after that look forward to seeing Morgan Newton and uh, give those guys some reps. You never know what's going to happen throughout the SEC season. You get a guy nicked up, you got to be able to have that second guy step up and pick up like he was a starter. Well, the Wildcats learned that in a most painful way a year ago when Hartline was injured in the fifth game of the season against South Carolina, and Morgan Newton had to come in and be the starting quarterback for the final eight games and doing a very good job. He went five and three with road victories at Auburn and at Georgia. Yeah, pretty impressive when you have a young guy like that. He was a freshman at the time, came in and managed the team very well. But uh, again, I think they have confidence in all three of these quarterbacks and uh, we should be able to see both of those guys tonight. McNeil from the six went 89 on his last return and dancing and going down at the 28. And that is the end of the first half. Impressive first half for the Kentucky Wildcats. Started slowly as they fell behind on the 59-yard touchdown run in the opening 113 of the ball game, but it has been all Wildcats ever since. Big plays from Randall Cobb and Joker Phillips. Home head coaching debut is going to be no doubt a victorious one with two quarters to play here and his team leading by four touchdowns. I think the thing that I've liked the best tonight from this Wildcat offense has been the balance. We saw it last week just about exactly balanced with the number of runs and passes tonight. They've done it on the ground and through the air. All right, let's go down on the field. Allison Williams is standing by Willie Taggart. Coach Taggart, you came out, you established the run in a big way with Bobby Rainey to start. Since then, not able to generate much offensively. What adjustments can you make in the second? We just got to get, we just got to be more aggressive up front. Right now, our guys are not aggressive enough. We're, we're getting beat in the trenches, and, and we're not we're not able to do anything. We're not able to protect the quarterback, do anything right now. We got to be able to protect the quarterback so we can throw and loosen, so we can loosen those guys up a little bit. Rainey did have a big play to start, and then Willie McNeil with the kickoff return. Do you feel like that's given you guys a little bit of a spark? A little bit. We just need more guys step up. Um, guys can't get down just because they score and I see a lot of that out there on, uh, on the field now. Guys just got to step up and keep playing. We got a long ball game. You talked about protecting the quarterback better in the second half offensively but defensively what adjustments can you take to better control this Kentucky offense? Well offense we got to get first downs. You know we we giving them great field position. They haven't defense been playing well. They just had a short field to go and they didn't have far to go. Offense got to play better. All right, Coach Taggart, thanks for your time. Good luck in that second half. Willie Taggart and the Hilltoppers will try to regroup down 28 to the Wildcats at the half. Don't go anymore. The Polar don't go anywhere. The Polaris halftime report is coming up. It's SEC football right here on CSS. ESPN3.com College Football Halftime Report is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Welcome to ESPN3.com's Halftime Report presented by Capital One. I'm Cassidy Hubbard alongside Christian Fourier. We'll get to today's action with Christian in a minute, but first, a story that keeps rearing its ugly head this young college football season is the wide-ranging NCAA probe of the relationship between agents and college football players. Suspensions played a big role in week one, and it's continued into week two. Georgia star receiver A.J. Green has been suspended for a total of four games for selling last season's Independence Bowl jersey for $1,000 to someone who qualifies as an agent. The junior is missing all of September, which includes three conference games, and won't be eligible until October 2nd against Colorado. Other recent suspensions include Alabama defensive end Marcel Darius, who was suspended for two games for accepting approximately $2,000 in improper benefits this summer. And 13 players on North Carolina's team are being investigated by the NCAA for violations. And on Sunday, John Blake, the associate 
appointed head football coach for the program resigned. He's reportedly a target of the investigation into possible improper conduct with agents. And South Carolina received formal notification Thursday that the NCAA is investigating its football program. Christian. A lot of violations going on in college football right now. What are your thoughts on the numerous violations and how the NCAA is handling the situation? The whole situation from top to bottom just makes me sick. A guy like John Blake, well-respected coach, has to quit because of all these things going on. But as far as the NCAA goes, I, I'm not really in favor of how they're handling it because they're judge, they're jury, and they're executioner. And just like the NCAA college football pass interference rule, it's interpreted differently depending on what the situation is. Case in point, Jeremiah Masoli leaves Oregon, finds a loophole to play at Ole Miss. Well, in my best Lee Corso vo voice, the NCAA says, not so fast, my friend. They don't like it. So what do they do? They wait to the last minute. They suspend them. Then they say, okay, listen, you can play. My thing is to keep it consistent around the board regardless of what's going on. And I almost rather the schools handle it internally if they could do it the right way. Well, there was a lot of talk that North Carolina's Marvin Austin may have tweeted about an agent-related party he attended in Miami, the same party several players are being investigated about, and that may have tipped off the NCAA. Twitter and social networking, obviously big among students, but then you have programs like Boise State. Chris Peterson has banned Twitter from its players. What, if at all, do you think the impact is of social networking in college football? Uh, I mean, Twitter and Facebook, they all have their place, and, and I love it, and we all, we all use it all the time. You got to take the Chris Peterson approach and just flat out don't let anybody do it. You see Marvin Austin here at the UNC LSU game. And my problem is when all these problems happen and people are drawing, players are drawing attention to themselves, it makes it about the player. And what it should be about is the team. UNC, man, what a tragic story this is because such high hopes. A lot of these defensive players who got suspended are future first and second round draft picks. And now they're being suspended for their juniors and senior years. It just, I don't like it at all. They just need to regulate it and really just listen. These things, whenever they happen, they live forever. And not only do they live forever, but once you film or make a message, it happens so fast and the whole world can see it. Yeah, now players have to worry about what happens in their everyday lives as, as opposed to just worrying about what they say just in the locker Just focus rooms. on football. Well, one game that was tweeted about a lot last Saturday is our impact performance of the week. Jacksonville State and quarterback Cody Blanchard. Cody threw a 30-yard touchdown pass on fourth down, and then they went on to convert the two-point conversion to shock Ole Miss 49-48 in double overtime. The vote, you know, wasn't even close. Remember to tune in tonight to College Football Final to find out what the Capital One Cup impact performances are from today's games. Then log on to ESPN.com slash Capital One Cup to make your vote. After the break, take a look at all of the day's actions. The ESPN3.com Halftime Report presented by Capital One rolls on. Number 12 Miami taking on number 2 Ohio State in a rematch of the 2003 Fiesta Bowl. Second quarter, Ohio State up three, first and goal. Dan Heron gets the pitch, rushes in for the four-yard touchdown. Ohio State up 20 to 10. Second quarter, Miami down 10. Ben Buchanan's punt fielded by Travis Benjamin on the run. Benjamin with great speed gets by everyone, takes it 79 yards to the house. Great speed and great blocking. Like you said, you can't coach speed. This guy has it. Third quarter, Miami down 26-17. Now Ja'Cory Harris passes over the middle, and it's picked off by Cameron Haywood. Cameron Haywood, what a great job of showing blitz and then going back into zone coverage. Ja'Cory Harris can't read it, picks it off. Hayward going all the way down with all his buddies, finally going to get tripped up. Ja'Cory Harris had a rough day today. That was one of his one of four interceptions for him and the Miami Hurricanes. Ensuing drive for Ohio State, Terrell Pryor rolls right, then comes back the other way to the left side and takes it in for the 14-yard touchdown. Great job keeping this play alive. Great job by him all day, Ohio State. Excellent win. Ohio State would go on to win it 36 to 24. Mark Stoops and Florida State taking on big brother Bob Stoops in Oklahoma. First quarter, score tied at seven. Landry Jones passes it to Ryan Broyles for the 18-yard score. Ryan Broyles with the sluggo route. That's a slant and go. Nice pass by Landry Jones. Second quarter, Oklahoma up 21-7. Jones gets it to James Hanna, who shakes off a tackle and goes in 46 yards to the house. Shakes, him off, shakes off the first guy, then gets some help from his receivers, who cuts down the defender. Nice job finishing the play. 
34 seconds left in the second. Same score, DeMarco Murray gets the handoff and rushes it in one yard for the TD. He had two touchdowns on the day. Oklahoma takes the 34-7 lead. Third quarter, same score, third and goal for Oklahoma. Jones gets it to Trent Rattery. He punches it in, seven yard touchdown. Jones threw for four scores on the day as Oklahoma rolled. Number 13, Virginia Tech coming off their week one loss to Boise State hosting James Madison. Early in the fourth, the Dukes down two. Drew Dudzik runs in for the 12-yard TD, one of two on the day for him. James Madison takes the lead, 21-6. Later in the fourth, fourth and two, Tyrod Taylor under, throws the ball, the pass goes incomplete. James Madison takes over. Five minutes remaining in the fourth, Darren Evans rushes up the middle. He's hit hard, coughs up the ball. It's recovered by Lavander Jones. Costly turnover for the Hokies. 13 seconds left. James Madison punting on fourth down. Virginia Tech trying to block the punt. Devon Morgan runs into it. The kicker, another costly mistake. 15 yards for roughing the kicker. First down, James Madison. Final seconds. The Dukes kneel it to end the game. James Madison hands Virginia Tech its second loss in six days, 21-16. Number 22, Georgia taking on number 24, South Carolina. First quarter, no score, third and one. Freshman Marcus Lattimore muscles it in for the two-yard TD run. Gamecocks up seven early. Later in the first quarter, third and nine for Georgia. Aaron Murray completes it to Tavares King for the big first down. That would set up a field goal. Bulldogs on the board, down four. Second quarter, second and goal for South Carolina. Lattimore gets it again. Gets it again, and the true freshman Marcus Latimer had 182 yards, two touchdowns. South Carolina, they got a running game now. Third quarter, Georgia down eight in the red zone. Washon Ely through the gap, fumbles it, but Stefan Gilmore recovers it for South Carolina. Yeah, Washon Ely uh, coming back from a one game suspension, showing a little bit of rust, trying to make something happen. Mike is not happy with that. Fourth quarter, South Carolina looking to ice it with a 24 yard field goal attempt. Spencer Lanning gets it to go, and South Carolina gets their first conference win of the year, 17 6, the final. After the break, we'll take a look at all of the day's actions. The ESPN3.com Halftime Report presented by Capital One rolls on. When the big cat comes, you know, there's contest. Oh, football. It's just so fired up. One man versus one man. And he blows the whistle. Let it rip. Hey, hey, way to come off the ball. You got to keep, you got to bring your feet with you. First, he uh, calls the name out and he uh, makes sure that the two guys are aligned. Blackwell Ferguson in the codes, in the codes. First of all, there's technique and uh, the, the, the responsibility to be able to be in a fundamental football position. The cousin got that one. Here we go. Somebody wins, and uh, it's a very competitive ball as well. Patrick Peterson in a clean grab. It's a lot go through your mind when Coach Carr, you, know, you, you definitely want to win first. That's the number one goal. For the most part, the matchups are pretty even, so the guy with the biggest heart is going to win. Good work. Damn good work, man. Damn good work. Christian, look familiar? I love that type of stuff. That is hand-to-hand -hand combat. That is as close to a Spartan warfare that you can get. I, I love this stuff because it does a lot of things. You know, it shows you who the fighter is. It shows you who's not going to back down. It shows you, you know, who is going to take it to the next level. Now, the, my biggest question is what I always wondered about, Cassidy, is what do the quarterbacks do? Because you know you're not going to see those guys in that movie. They flip a coin. How do they show how tough they are? <laughs> well, they got to take hits, hits. So I assume uh, they got to be in those. Quarterbacks always get out of everything. Uh, like the kickers too. Exactly. Huh? What do they do? Uh, they do some stuff. <laughs> they add the three points. Don't don't forget about that. All right. That's all the time we have today on ESPN3.com's halftime report presented by Capital One. Make sure to tune in to College Football Final to see this week's Capital One Cup Impact Performance nominees. I'm Cassidy Hubbard. He's Christian Fourier. Let's send you back out to the second half. 42 to 14. Matt Stewart and Chris Doring with you. And the 42 points, the most that Kentucky has scored in a half. Going back to it. Start of the second half, SEC football presented by Regions Bank. Kentucky leading Western Kentucky University 42 to 14. As we begin the third quarter, the Hilltoppers still in search of snapping the nation's longest losing streak, currently at 21 games. 
they face a tall task if they're going to do that here tonight. A lot to be learned here in the second half, though. Willie Taggart wants to see which guys show up and which guys shut it down. He said he, he didn't want any stake eaters and bus riders. He's trying to get rid of those guys. I think he'll be able to determine it here in the second half based upon his team's effort. Cobb from the 14-yard line stops, surges forward to the 29. That's where the Wildcats will start on offense. A few moments ago, Allison Williams caught up with head coach Joker Phillips. That's our principal edge to the game. Thanks, Matt. Coach Phillips, other than that big run by Bobby Rainey to start things for Western Kentucky, you guys have pretty much shut down their offense. Are you happy with how your defense has played in the first half? Yeah, I am, but we cannot give up big plays. Nobody runs on our defense with 59 yards on the run, and, and we gave up a big play second week in a row. Can't happen. Offense looked pretty good in the first half, seemed to be clicking on all cylinders. What can we expect more of in the second? Well, we want to continue to be balanced with the run in the past. We've been that the last two weeks. And we want to continue that. A good night tonight for Mike Hartline. Good to see him making some big things happen. It is. Mike's our leader on offense, and I'm, I'm happy for him. All right, Coach Phillips, thanks. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Allison. That's our principal edge to the game. Time to plan a better way forward with the principal financial group. Learn more at AmericaRebuilds.com. Joker Phillips well on his way to winning his home head coaching debut. Mike Hartline's had a big role in that. 13 of 15 for 141 and a couple of touchdowns. Derek Locke. Locke caught from behind at the 38 yard line by linebacker Thomas Majors. Nice play by Thomas Majors there in the pursuit. You thought that Derek Locke was going to get to the edge but Majors showed his speed from the middle linebacker position and catching him before he was able to get the first down. So third down and one as Majors prevented the first down at least for now. Locke rushed for 907 yards a year ago 1835 yards for his career. Number seven on the all time Kentucky list. That's a first down for Locke as he crosses the 40 and gets to the 42 yard line. Of course the young man who came to the University of Kentucky on a track scholarship and actually was the SEC freshman field athlete of the year his first year on campus. Pretty Holds impressive. The school there. record yeah. for the long jump. Yeah I like the uh, I like the ups he's got but this guy is certainly better suited for the football field as you mentioned before 4 2 40 he runs. Al Miller the tight end in motion behind the line they'll fake a handoff to lock this time and throw back to Al Miller who was wide open down to the 39 yard line beautifully executed play there Chris. that's a result of having an effective running game they gave the ball to lock on the first two plays in the series able to pick up some big yards there they fake it to him hardline does a good job of selling the fake everybody's flowing that way they get the ball to the outside and the big tight end wide open for another first down for kentucky first and 10 ball at the 38 yard line that is the Sixth third down actually that was not a third down conversion they had picked up the first down on the prior. But they've done a great job on third down six of eight passes thrown complete to Matt Rourke. Rourke. First catch of the night for Matt Rourke the former high school star out of the Atlanta area who was a quarterback like all the other wide receivers on this team that played high school quarterback except for Chris Matthews. Rourke another in that long line. Matt we talked to the coaches yesterday Kentucky likes to recruit quarterbacks because most times in high school nowadays they're sticking their best athletes at the quarterback position. They've done a good job of transitioning those players to the wide receiver position. Blitz shown by Western Kentucky University. They drop out of it. First and 10 ball at the 21 yard line. Nothing doing for Locke on that one. He got stopped in his tracks by Thomas Majors. And going back to that thought, why recruit high school quarterbacks to play wide receiver when a kid like Rourke, when a kid like Cobb got to campus? They'd never played the position before in their life. Yeah, there are some intricacies that they need to learn about playing the receiver position. But the great thing about it is that they have this vision of the field. Once you play quarterback, you're seeing all of the field. You know what everybody else does out there. Now at the receiver position, you're really only worried about your half of the field with the safety, the linebacker, and the corner. Second down and 12. Handoff, lock down to the 18 yard line. And of course, as we just saw a few moments ago, T. Martin, the former quarterback, 
the wide receivers coach here at Kentucky. The great irony is that there they have these quarterbacks playing wide receiver for the team. They've got a quarterback as the wide receiver coach. Yeah, what better way to teach a guy to make that transition than to have a coach that played the quarterback position now coaching you at receiver? And I think that clearly after you've played the quarterback position, you know what you want from your receivers. You've been in that position throwing the ball, and you certainly can go out there and do those things that you wish your receivers would have done for you. Cats, six of eight on third downs and completion right there as they were trying to get the ball to all Miller, the tight end. And on the eighth play of the drive, it stalls at the 18-yard line. Ryan Beard with the pressure from the outside there finally was able to disrupt the rhythm that we've seen from Kentucky here. They've done a great job prior to that on third down. They were six of eight. First uh, real stop we've seen from Western Kentucky since that first quarter. Tidlachka, 35-yard attempt. He kicked the first two field goals of his collegiate career against this Hilltoppers team back in 2008. And he misses on this one, pushed it wide to the right. But there is a flag down on the field at the 21-yard line. So will Kentucky get another chance? Pin wagers your referee. Five in the backfield against the kicking team. That penalty declined. Field goal tries unsuccessful. First down, Western Kentucky. So four minutes and 20 seconds into the third quarter, we're still at 42-14. Don't go away. Hall of Famer Tayshawn Prince is standing by. SEC football on CSS is brought to you by Polaris, the hardest working, smoothest riding off-road vehicles. See them at your local dealer or visit PolarisIndustries.com. By Cook's Pest Control, upgrade your home's termite protection to the unbeatable combination. Cook's Pest Control and Centricon call Cook's to get a free pest and termite evaluation. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Call Geico at 1-800-947-AUTO. That's 1-800-947-AUTO or visit geico.com. Welcome back to Commonwealth Stadium, Kentucky leading. Western Kentucky University 42 to 14 in the third quarter and I'm joined by yet another University of Kentucky basketball great Tayshawn Prince now with the Pistons kind of a special night for you tonight you were inducted into the Kentucky Athletic Hall of Fame and you've done so much in your career you've won an NBA championship with the Pistons you've won an Olympic gold medal so what does this night mean to you here tonight to, to get be honored where it kind of started for you uh, it's an awesome feeling and I say that for the simple fact uh, you know, as a kid, you always dream about one day playing in the NBA. You dream about what college you're going to attend and things like that. But you, you never really think about the Hall of Fame. So when you start to think of that in, it, in itself, it's just, it just, you just get in a loss for words. Uh, you know, it, it's something that, you know, something that you'll cherish for the rest of your life. So it's definitely a great experience. Definitely a be, to be, it's fun to be back on the UK campus. The fans has always been supportive of me when I was here and even more supportive uh, as I uh, had left and pursued my career. So that's just an amazing feeling. They were very supportive tonight. You got quite a round of applause. Yeah, um, um, you know, to the fact that I was one of the youngest ones out of the, the, the inductees, so most of the fans have, you know, seen me recently. So, uh, but, uh, you know, the fans have been great to me my whole career, uh, like I said before, but it's just a just an amazing, amazing and uh, f fulfilling experience to be back on this campus. So many great basketball players have come out of this school. Rajon Rondo was here tonight. Did you guys get a chance to catch up a little bit? Yeah, we got a chance to catch up a little bit. I didn't have the chance to play with uh, Rajon. Uh, he's doing a great job with the Celtics. Uh, obviously, he's showing that leadership from the point guard position. They've had the opportunity to go to a couple of finals. Um, you know, I'm happy for him. Uh, hopefully, one day he'll be in the same position as being in the Hall of Fame as well. Real quick, Tayshon, what do you think about the atmosphere? Everybody talks about the basketball fans in Kentucky, but it's a pretty good showing here tonight. No question. Uh, you know, the, the UK fans are supportive in every sport. And uh, when I was here, obviously they had Tim Couch, Dusty Bonner at quarterback, Jared Lorenzen. Uh, the fans have been supportive throughout, uh, you know, no matter what sport it is. You know, they bleed blue here. Uh, obviously, I wasn't born here, but 
Uh, once I came here and went to college here, uh, they treated me like I was their own. So that's what made it special as well. Tayshawn, thanks for your time. Good luck with the Pistons this season. Thank you very much. That's my NBA team, so I'm definitely going to be rooting for Tayshawn on the Pistons, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Allison. She's rolling with the celebrities tonight. Of course, I'm with you, Chris, and I, I consider you my celebrity. Yeah, I appreciate but She's that. hanging with Rajon Rondo. I know she's and, in heaven. She talks about her little Pistons yeah. and how much she likes them coming from the Michigan area. Tayshawn Prince, great star power, of course, and the Kentucky Wildcats basketball program and Joker Phillips trying to do his best to create that same kind of star power in the football program. Right now though the Hilltoppers putting together a drive here in the second half gets thwarted there by the quarterback sack from Danny Trevathan. Danny Trevathan big play Danny Trevathan top returning tackler from a year ago with 82 stops gets his first sack of the season. Kwan Jakes has got to step up right there again. We talked in the first half about the pressure coming from the outside from this Kentucky defense. If he steps up in the pocket he buys himself a little bit more time. Tough duty for these tackles tonight at Western Kentucky University and having to try to slow down these great ends and linebackers for the University of Kentucky. Second down and 17 now ball back at the 48 yard line. Bobby Rainey Rainey down to the 39 yard line now it's got you know the, the, the results not going to be what uh, Willie Taggart and the Hilltoppers are looking for here tonight but I think you and I certainly would probably be in agreement that we have been impressed with Bobby Rainey and also with Willie McNeil they've got some pieces over there just not enough pieces yet for Willie Taggart's life it's tough duty for Willie da Willie Taggart he came here inherited a team that wasn't very good He's got a couple guys that have bought into what he's selling, but he's got to go out and recruit his own players. It's a much different situation than what Joker Phillips has inherited. Obviously, he's recruited many of these guys at Kentucky. Different mindset instilling a new mentality into the Hilltoppers. Third down and eight. Jake's firing. It is complete to the aforementioned McNeil. Another big play by the redshirt freshman and a first down at the 29-yard line. Nice patience by Jakes waited on his guy he had the, the guy out of the slot running a little under route and Willie McNeil and McNeil with the wherewithal to get up field past that first down marker best drive that we've really seen tonight from the Hilltoppers we saw the long run from Bobby Rainey in the first series and then the kickoff return but we haven't seen a sustained drive from them till now and I know this is something that Willie Tiger is going to have a lot of pride in is the fact that they're continuing to play hard here in the third quarter. First and 10 ball at the 30. There's Bobby Rainey again. Bobby Rainey moving the pile not going down at all. Five took eight. A, took a third shot on him to bring him down. Yeah, little guy little bowling ball in there pushing the pile. But again pressing the hole cutting back getting north and south and then driving for that extra yardage they're very impressed with what this young man's done tonight Rainey has gone for 119 yards tonight after 155 against Nebraska last week in fact that now makes four of his last five games he has rushed for over 100 yards it's going to be a lot easier for this team once they get into their conference schedule in the Sun Belt after playing teams like Nebraska and Kentucky eighth play of the drive there's Bobby Rainey again Pulled down from behind. That's going to be a horse collar tackle. And a first and goal inside the five. Matt, I think we saw a great contrast in Bobby Rainey's ability. The play before, we saw the driving power. And here, the burst up the middle to the hole. He saw the daylight and got to the outside to get them down inside the five. The horse collar there. That will. That's why they've out outlawed that kind of tackle there in the back. Didn't really actually get the horse collar, I guess. Didn't grab yeah, the back looked. of the shoulder pads. Yeah, when we saw it in live action, it, it seemed like that's a pretty obvious call. But on the replay, there was no horse collar at all. And that, of course, is not something that is reviewable. Not a big play anyway. They were already down inside the five-yard line. Didn't end up hurting Kentucky all that much. But that is a very dangerous tackle. You see you know the body weight of the tackler falling on the back of the runner's legs and we've seen a lot of guys get injured that way. First and goal Bobby Rainey touchdown. Second touchdown of the night for Bobby Rainey and that makes it 42 to 20. 
They're not going to get the win here tonight, Chris, but I'm guessing that somewhere along the line, Willie Taggart and these Hilltoppers are going to snap that losing streak, and it's going to happen this year. It's yeah. probably going to happen in the Sun Belt. They've got Indiana next week and then USF the week after, but somewhere in the Sun Belt, they're going to put that thing to rest. Yeah, I don't think we've seen any quit tonight out of the Hilltoppers, and I think that's something that Willie Taggart definitely wanted to look for coming into this ball game. Tinius with the PAT, and with 531 to play in the third quarter, Bobby Rainey pay dirt for the second time tonight, making it 42-21. Five and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Kentucky's lead 42-21 on Western Kentucky University. Bobby Rainey carrying the bulk of the work on that nine play 80 yard drive for the Hilltoppers. Five carries 51 yards. He's now at 139 on the night. And he's got a chance to go over 150 yards tonight. This will be the back to back games with over 150 yards the second time or the first time that's been done since 1999. You know who did it in 1999. Rod Smart of XFL fame. You remember He yes. Hate Me? He Hate Me. He Hate Me did it against Eastern Illinois and Indiana State. A little bit more impressive here tonight if Bobby Rainey's able to do it after going over 150 against Nebraska and Kentucky. Our viewers on CSS remember Bobby Rainey from his days at Griffin Georgia High School. He was the CSS Offensive Player of the Year for the state of Georgia his senior year. Rushed for over 5,000 yards and scored 88 touchdowns in his career. Monsell Allen with the return and Allen up to the 38 yard line and that's where the Wildcats go back on offense. Let's look at tonight's USPS trivia question and Chris here it is. Who was the winning quarterback in the first ever BCS National Championship game? Was it A Danny Werfel your teammate the Florida Gators B Chris Leak Florida Gators C T Martin Tennessee Volunteers or D Matt Mock of the LSU Tigers answer coming later in the game. I don't think Danny did. I don't think they had the BCS when Danny did it. So I'm going to narrow it down to one of those other three. Hand off Cobb on the reverse. Cobb more than 10 on the play up close to the 50 yard line. Ben Duvall making the tackle for the Hilltoppers but way downfield is Randall Cobb up close to 150 yards of all purpose yardage here tonight. Wildcats still have their starters in at this point only a 21 point lead with five minutes to go in the third quarter. Their offense really hasn't done much since the half. They look to build a little momentum and put a good drive together probably before giving way to some of the backup players. First and 10 now. Toss to lock. Locked to the short side of the field, hammered out of bounds by Darius Brooks, the cornerback. But again, another big gainer for the Wildcats, and they'll take six, seven yards per play. No, I like the way this offensive line is playing for Kentucky. There you see a couple of the big guys getting out in front. Uh, they had to replace four starters from last year. Only Stuart Hines returned from last year's starting lineup, and uh, they've done a good job tonight of imposing their will on this very talented front four for Western Kentucky University. Second down and three ball 42 yard line Rourke in motion there at the bottom of your screen. And that's Monsell Allen Monsell Allen down to the 34 yard line. They had to do a sales job on Monsell because they were looking for a fullback. Of course he was a tailback. No tailback ever wants to become a fullback. But uh, Joker Phillips came to him and said, look, we really need you to fill the position. And he has been a battering ram blocking fullback and a guy that you can get the ball to as well on running plays and an occasional pass. Lock. No running room as he came this way that time. That was Santoro, the strong safety, making the tackle. Great story about Monsell Allen, though. We just recently observed the five-year anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. He's a young man out of New Orleans, was displaced to Texas, and ultimately ended up making his way to Charlotte. Family ran out of money in Texas and had to make their way to Charlotte, where they were helped out by a local church. This guy had a tremendous story in making his way here to the University of Kentucky. Second down and 10, setting up the screen out of the hands of Locke. 
And now it's going to be third down and long for the Wildcats. And the offense, after performing so well in the second quarter, Chris, has sputtered a little bit here in the third. One thing it's hard to do sometimes when you have as much success as they did in the second quarter, you get up big like that, you go sit in the locker room for 15 minutes. It's tough to keep your mental focus. This is a great exercise for the starters of going in there and keeping their poise and continuing to have their foot on the gas. Hilltoppers crowding the line, showing blitz. Let's see if they stay with it. Hartline checking out of the play. They had man coverage out on the edge. Let's see if Hartline can take advantage of it. They go deep, has a man wide open touchdown. Randall Cobb does it again. Touchdown pass, touchdown catch, punt return for touchdown. Now number two all time on the Kentucky touchdown list with 28. Forty eight to twenty one. Did Lachka getting a workout on the PAT tonight? And it is a four touchdown lead again. And Matt, the danger of bringing pressure is that you leave man coverage on the outside. The true freshman cornerback with no match for Derek Cobb. Nine twenty-one, Kentucky with 3.02 to play here in the third. Earlier tonight, we asked you the USPS trivia question. Who was the winning quarterback in the first ever BCS National Championship game? Your four choices were full, Leak, Martin, and Mock. The answer coming up after the kickoff. Pretty good list of quarterbacks here. That's the thing about the SEC. Great history. And there, there's the answer. Well, there it is. Before the kick. Well, we killed the drama, but it was T. Martin. <laughs> T. Martin, who is now, of course, the wide receivers coach for the Kentucky Wildcats. You had to know it was going to be him after he was on the staff here. Great lead in to talking about what he's doing after his career. But yeah, great, great game. After all those years of having Peyton Manning not being able to win a national championship, T. Martin steps in and leads those guys to a big win out in Arizona. Young man out of Mobile, Alabama. McNeil's already got one kickoff return for touchdown tonight. Not this time, got stopped in his tracks at the 19-yard line. We all remember that day, January 4th, 1999, at the Fiesta Bowl BCS Championship game, Tennessee Volunteers versus the Florida State Seminoles. Peerless Price, number 37 on the receiving end of that big touchdown pass from T. Martin. Volunteers win it 23-16, first ever BCS National Champions. And you see the BCS, SEC synonymous, synonymous four straight BCS National Championships, 6-0 all time in the big game for the Southeastern Conference. Bobby Rainey up to the 30 yard line. And I think you made a good point earlier, Chris, in regard to Bobby Rainey is that he is so small, he sometimes gets uh, lost in the uh, in the shuffle yeah. and you lose him. You, you can't find him. And then he slips out of there and gets a first down. It goes back to that patience thing as well. You saw him kind of waiting for a hole to open up and then he hit it big. I, I think you're right there. Definitely an advantage to be able to kind of hide behind some of those bigger offensive linemen. Rainey now at 150 yards rushing tonight. He's done it on 16 carries. Took him 30 carries to get 155 against the Cornhuskers last week. McNeil out there being held, and there was no flag unless there was no holding going on. It certainly looked from our vantage point like there was some holding going on. Didn't yeah, it? As a wide receiver, you, you saw the arm bar there <laughs> in trying to impede the progress of the wide receiver. But another effort to get the ball to Willie McNeil. He is their playmaker on, out, on the outside. And you see this press coverage. Steve Brown, the defensive coordinator, talked to us yesterday. He's one of the few guys left that really enjoys playing press coverage. They play a lot of man coverage. If they blitz, they're bringing at man blitzes, they're known zone blitz an awful lot. Has a lot of confidence in his cornerbacks. Second down and 10, ball at the 30 yard line. You saw McNeil go to the sideline. Rainey, three or four tough yards up to the 34 yard line. Ronnie Sneed, the linebacker, making the stop for the Wildcats. If you want to see my man Chris Doring get fired up, 
just have a wide receiver being held out there on yeah. the fly pattern. I mean, you, the, the, the wide receivers, it doesn't matter. It's been a while, it's 17 years since you caught that pass here, but you guys are a tight fraternity. No, no question. You, cornerbacks are notorious for cheating. Those guys are trying to get away with whatever they can. You saw the corner trying to slow down Willie McNeil on the outside there. No call from the official. No slowing down Bobby Rainey tonight. 17 carries, 153 yards, two touchdowns, and now a third down and seven coming up for the Hilltoppers. And a timeout call by Western Kentucky University to think about it, as they are one of six on their third down conversion opportunities here tonight. That's been the difference in the ball game, Matt. The consistency and continuity of Kentucky's offense. They're seven of 10 on third down tonight. Western Kentucky University only one of six as you mentioned and it's been because of the long down and distance situations that they've been faced with on third down tough to pick up third and seven third and eight third and 15 we've seen them in tonight it allows those defensive ends to pin those ears back and get after it DeQuinn Evans one of the best at doing that we talked to the uh, the staff the other day who mentioned uh, we talked to, to uh, Mike Sanford told us that DeQuinn Evans much like Dwight Freeney, one of those smaller guys that comes off the edge, pins his ears back in those passing situations. He felt like it was totally necessary that they're able to continue to stay in some shorter, manageable down and distance situations. Well, join your favorite talking football experts, Tony Barnhart, Mark Schlebaugh, Chris Doring's buddy, Brady Ackerman, and our host, Bob Neal, as they give you their latest analysis on football around the South in the nation, talking football Sundays at 8 Eastern, Thursdays at 7 Eastern on CSS. Rainey could not hold on to the pass. It was thrown a little bit behind him. I'm guessing the guy's going to hit that James Madison Virginia Tech game hard and heavy tomorrow night. We've seen some big upsets in the first two weeks of college football already this year. I think we're going to continue to see more of those as well as some of these FCS teams defeating some of the FBS teams. The quality that is being spread across the country now it's making it tough there you look at some of the upset scores Virginia Tech going down you saw South Dakota with a big win over Minnesota Gardner Webb that's your team there right man <laughs> <laughs> the Bulldogs out of the Big South Conference beating the Zips of Akron who will be the opponent for the Kentucky Wildcats next Saturday night right here at Commonwealth Stadium another one of those line drive kicks this one's not returnable and down at the 36 yard line Randall Cobb that's where the Wildcats go back on offense with 72 seconds left here in the third quarter and of course the other was uh, Kansas getting the big win over Georgia Tech as the Yellow Jackets of the Atlantic Coast Conference on the road in the Big 12 not a good day for the Atlantic Coast Conference as Virginia Tech gets whacked by JMU Florida State Jimbo Fisher honeymoon officially over as Oklahoma took out their frustrations on the Seminoles and Morgan Newton checks into the ball game as the new quarterback for the Wildcats here tonight. Newton getting his first action of the season throws complete to Matt Rourke and Rourke slung out of bounds at the 45 yard line by Darius Brooks. Morgan Newton the guy as you mentioned in the first half that led this Kentucky team after Mike Hartline went down with an injury led him to a five and three record through part of their toughest portion of the schedule. He was a guy that was competing for the starting job this year and uh, was very unhappy I think about getting beaten out obviously nobody likes getting beaten out but he felt like he had a good enough spring and summer to be able to be the starting quarterback for the Wildcats second down and two all Miller behind the line and in motion handoff goes to Derek Locke no actually uh, Donald Russell on the carry Russell across the 50 and Allison what you got on Hartline. Well, guys, a big reason Mike Hartline got that starting job is that because he went down to see his brother after the bowl game, and he came back with kind of a new sense of determination. His brother Brian is a wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins, and he said when he went down there and he visited with him, it kind of turned his world around and made him realize what he wants most, and that's football. He said from that moment, he made it his goal to be the starter, to stay healthy, and do everything possible to have a strong senior year. He said, I need to make the most of this opportunity to try and get to the next level. And Seeing his brother at that next level made it more tangible to, to him. And he said, you know, it was a big motivator, and he never in his life wants to be away from football, whether it's coaching or playing in the NFL. He said he will always be near football. Guys. Uh, all right. Thank you, Allison. Of course, his brother Brian also played at Ohio State. They got a big win over the U today. We're done with three quarters here in horse country with the Wildcats on top by four touchdowns.
Start of the fourth quarter and even 7-7 in the third frame for WKU and Kentucky. 49-21 as we begin the final 15 minutes here at Commonwealth Stadium. Second down and seven for the Wildcats. Ball at the 45. Matt Stewart, Chris Doreen, Allison Williams with you. SEC football presented by Regions Bank. Raymond Sanders on the carry. Quantaris Smith, the defensive end, dropped him for a big loss. First time we've talked about Quantaris Smith tonight. He's another one of those leaders. Randy Sanders talked about the defensive ends being the strength of this Hilltopper defense. And uh, we've seen both of those guys make big plays in the backfield tonight. Wildcats getting a little bit deep into the reserves here with Newton at quarterback. And now Sanders playing the tailback. Also, it looks like uh, Aaron Boyd is in at one of the wide receiver positions, as is Brian Adams. Great story about Brian Adams we'll go into here in a moment, but uh, a guy that probably shouldn't even be out on the field this year. Newton scrambling. Makes one man miss, runs to the sticks, comes up short, shy of the 40-yard line. And now it's going to be fourth down and short. We'll see what the Wildcats do. Looks like they're going to send Tidlochka out there to punt. Brian Adams, a guy that got a blood clot while he was at home during the preseason of 2009, called the trainers here after going to an ER. And they told him to, he needed to get to a hospital in a hurry. Credits the training staff for saving his life. Had to sit out last year after an operation to remove a rib and a, a muscle out of his body there. Healthy now and happy to be back out on the playing field. Said he cherishes the opportunity just to, to put the Wildcat uniform on. Play gets blown dead before Tedlachka can kick it away. Yeah, I think dead the ball. initial. The lay of game on the kicking team. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Maybe that'll help out Tedlachka a little bit more since he booted into the end zone yeah. on that kick. But uh, I think the initial medical indication that he got was, hey, it's going to be yeah. okay, don't worry about it. Well, things didn't get better, and he, so he calls the medical staff here, yeah. and they were the ones who clued him in and said, look, get to the hospital now. He was planning on driving back from the Atlanta area up here to Lexington. Says that could have killed him. He might not have ever made it back. So uh, great credit to the training staff here at the University of Kentucky. Tidlachka on the kick. McNeil lets it go over his head. It kicks into the end zone again for another touchback. Early fourth quarter, Kentucky in command here at home. SEC football on CSS is brought to you by Regions Bank. If you're ready for a better banking experience and switch to Regions, Regions Bank, proud to be the official bank of the Southeastern Conference. By Tony Sachery, turn your same old into Creole with Tony Sachery's original Creole seasoning. Tony Sachery's makes everything taste great. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors, helping you support your team with licensed gear and tailgating essentials at low prices every day. Back in horse country here in Lexington, Kentucky. The Wildcats leading the Hilltoppers 49-21. Western Kentucky University gives the ball to Rainey. Rainey, about four more yards on the play. Time now to take a look at our Geico great save of the game. We take you back to early second quarter. Randall Cobb perhaps saved this game for Kentucky. A big 50-yard punt return for touchdown opened up the floodgates for the Wildcats in that quarter. Yeah, the route was on after that, but you're right. Tight first quarter with some good productivity from the Hilltoppers. Uh, Randall Cobb's done it, though, on the air, through the air tonight with a touchdown reception. Big punt return through a touchdown. The guy does it all. And 98 yards receiving for Cobb tonight, which is a new career high for him. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Call Geico at 1-800-947-AUTO or visit geico.com. The personal record is not going to last for long. He's going to have a big year this year. I think the rest of the country is going to know what folks in the SEC know, and that is just how dynamic a football player that uh, Cobb is, man. It, it is a impressive sight when you get a chance to talk to him, the presence that he has. So cheery, enjoys playing football. I think he elevates the play of those guys around him as well. You know, and, and talking to Joker Phillips about uh, Randall Cobb, it, it would be a perfect opportunity for him to gloat and say, you know what, we found a diamond in the rough. We knew what we were doing. Nobody else knew what they were doing. Jake's throws complete, and that is a first down to Vasquez. 
at the 31-yard uh, line or close to the first down, depending upon the spot. And he said, you know what, in the defense, look, he was a quarterback. He's not a big guy, around six feet tall. He was a quarterback. And you did not know how he would project at wide receiver at the next level. We really were probably more fortunate than smart to get him. Although, you got to give him credit. They, they recognized the talent, and they said, this guy can do something for us. They got him right out of Tennessee's backyard. Rich Brooks, the former head coach here, very excited about getting him. They said if he was four inches taller, everybody would be recruiting him as a quarterback. But this young man has been a find. And I know that Tennessee, the volunteer coach, has got to be kicking themselves for not giving him a scholarship. Handoff, Rainey. Rainey to the outside, and Rainey with a workhorse effort tonight out to the 44-yard line. Rainey now with a new career high rushing as he goes up over 160. Back to 171. Back to back weeks of over 150 yards, as we talked about earlier. The first time a Hilltopper running back has done that since he hate me did it back in 1999. But I tell you what, I have been very, very impressed. They've really got nothing going in the passing game. Kentucky really has no threat of having to play back. They're loading guys in the box, and yet Bobby Rainey continues to pick up yardage every time he touches the ball. Taking a rest on the sideline right now. Jakes firing, and it is complete out on the edge. Jim Murphy, who came into the ball game when Tristan Jones got injured on the second play of the contest. Third string tight end making the grab right there. Michael Bailey knocked him out of bounds right there. It's a great story about Michael Bailey, a guy that transferred in just about a month or so ago from uh, Southwest Mississippi Community College. He's a guy that plays fast. He's a great tackler, but really got caught up Thanks to a guy that's no longer playing for this Kentucky team, Matt Lentz, the former safety, had to quit football because of numerous concussions, took him under his wing and got him up to speed, allowing him to become a starter for this Kentucky defense. Nothing doing on that one right there. Bobby Rainey has been the story for the Hilltoppers here tonight. And although it's not going to result in a victory, Chris, He's going to be a guy that's going to get him some wins this season. And once they get into the Sun Belt Conference play, you know he's going to be a player that can be a difference maker for them. Big run here. You see him dragging the Kentucky defenders. But you got to give credit as well to this offensive line. Western Kentucky University offensive line has been very physical. They've created some holes for him. I think these guys are going to be good once they get into their conference play. First down carry right there for the Hilltoppers as they push it out across the or down across the 45 yard line. Rainey with 172 yards, a stout 7.8 yards per carry. Mike Sanford, the uh, passing game coordinator, told us the other day that 30 carries last week was probably a little too much. They got carried away with giving him the ball with the success they had in the second half. Seems like they're doing the same thing tonight. I, I don't blame him, though. He's been a beast for the Hilltoppers. Like the great Herschel Walker once said, hey, look, the ball's not heavy. <laughs> Rainey running heavy down across the 35, down to the 33. Ball at the 33-yard line, 12-yard pickup. Does he remind you of any running back in particular? Uh, he looks a little bit like Chris Johnson for the Tennessee Titans. You know, Chris Johnson, a smaller running back, has great bursts and agility, but yet can run with power. Or if I thought about somebody in the NFL, probably Chris Johnson would be the guy that most strikes the, uh, the same similarities. Chris Johnson, of course, out of East Carolina turn the world on its head at the combine when he came out and blows that 4.340. I saw where he's getting, he's, he's gunning for 2,500 rushing yards this year. Jakes, they're going deep on that one to Vasquez, and that is a touchdown. Well, how about that? Western Kentucky pulls that one out of their back pocket. That's a 34-yard strike from Jakes to Vasquez. Nice throw by Jakes there as well. Uh, Jakes. Hangs in there after the play action fake. Waits for his receiver to get over the top. And then a good job by Vasquez of having a step and watching it all the way in. Nice to see them having some success here throwing the football in the second half. Yeah, that is the first touchdown pass of the season for Jakes. PAT good. And with 8.32 to play in the fourth, 49-28.
Well, welcome back. 48-29 Kentucky on top in the fourth. One of the new additions to the staff here at Kentucky under Joker Phillips is strength and conditioning coach Rock Oliver. He came to the team from the Bengals for his second stint here at UK, and the guys will tell you he has not just changed the way they look, he's changed the way they feel. They are leaner, they are stronger, but they are also playing with more confidence, a more positive attitude. And some of these changes have been tangible. For example, they began off-season conditioning. He asked them to do 10 at 50 yard sprints known as gassers. The guys thought he was crazy. They thought they couldn't do it. Well, they did it, and by the end, they were doing 24. Mike Hartline said he came in and he inflicted this mindset of how to win and how to prepare to win. He said he came in, he treated them like men, so they acted like men. They feel lucky to have him here, guys. He's the only strength coach in the SEC with NFL experience. Yeah, I've always said that the guy that has the biggest opportunity to make an impression on a football team is the strength and conditioning coordinator. He's the guy that has the most time during the offseason. He sets the mindset for a football team. They wanted to instill competition in this Kentucky Wildcat team, and they've competed all summer long. He's a guy that has helped them develop a swagger. You know, I look at this Kentucky team, they have a much greater swagger than what I've ever seen from them before. A lot of it has to do with Coach Rock, what he's been able to convince these guys that they're better than what they are. We talked to Joker Phillips yesterday. He mentioned that these guys walk around like they're all going to the NFL, and it's because of this guy right here. He has NFL experience. He's been where these guys want to go, and he has them believing that all of them can compete at that level. And Chris, it's not just swagger and confidence, it's also team unity. He started something with this team, and before every game, practice, and at halftime, they play a type of music, and it sounds like the beating of the heart. And the theme is one heartbeat. The guys come in, they clap to the music, and he says it gets everybody in sync. Ricky Lumpkin said that he can see this team come together as they do it. They all feel like they're on the same page. He said that has been the biggest difference Rock has made, that confidence, that swagger, and the team unity. Well, Allison, a lot of confidence and swagger on that pass from Morgan Newton to Matt Rohr giving the Wildcats the ball at the 19-yard line, a 40-yard completion to Rohr. Good, good job by Newton there, keeping the play alive. Sometimes you get that scramble play where you're able to break open as a wide receiver, and uh, certainly Newton did a good job of finding Rohr down the field. Sanders slashing his way down inside the 10 yard line. Thomas Majors making the stop at a first and goal to go coming up for the Cats. Rourke, another one of those converted quarterbacks as we talked about before. He's a guy that's been a little bit inconsistent. His hands have uh, let him down here. The coaching staff looking for him to step up, learn a little bit more about how to play the receiver position, but he's been a great addition. Very physical, not only on the wide receiver position here, but also in special teams, been a big contributor in the teams. Second down and one with the ball just outside the 10. They spotted it outside the 10, not inside the 10. Sanders inside the end zone. Raymond Sanders rumbles in from a little bit more than 10 yards out, and it is now 55 to 28. Sanders with his best Derek Locke impression there. We saw Locke earlier with the spin move. Sanders does the exact same thing in getting to the end zone. Looked like he was bottled up, bounced it to the outside for a touchdown. These guys, they got a pretty talented backfield. We've talked about the receiving core, but uh, Locke, Russell, and the true freshman Sanders have been big tonight for this running game of the Cats. Sanders, the seventh different Wildcat to score a touchdown here tonight. PAT is good. Six and a half minutes to play in this one. Raymond Sanders with the spin move and the dash to paper. Six twenty-six to play in this ball game. The Kentucky Wildcats about to win the home head coaching debut of Joker Phillips. Improved to two and zero in the season. Joker will become the first Kentucky head coach to win his first two games since Paul Bear Bryant. Joe Lofty company right there. SEC opener two weeks from now at Florida. 56-28 Wildcats. McNeil runs towards the kick, watches it sail through the back of the end zone, and congratulations. The Kentucky Wildcats wide receiver, quarterback, punt returner, you name it, he does it. Randall Cobb, who has exhibited the right stuff in tonight's game, 
brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Randall Cobb is our player of the game. Right stuff, low price every day. Matt, we talked about him in the open and his diversity and what he brings to this offense. It's nice when players make you look good. You know, they go out there, catches one for a touchdown, returns one on a punt return for a touchdown, throws a touchdown. Appreciate Randall Cobb for making you and I look good in the booth. <laughs> Absolutely. It's been fun watching him. Yeah, no, he is, he's going to be a big time player, not only in the conference this year, but I'm talking about across the entire landscape. If they can have some success, I wouldn't be surprised to see this guy be a Heisman Trophy candidate. New quarterback for Western Kentucky University, and it results in a fumble. Matt Pelasasa had come in to play quarterback. They had some trouble with the exchange, and the Wildcats on top of it at the 19 yard line. Anytime you change up and put a different quarterback in there, it's tough to make sure those mesh points are tight the way that they need to be. And obviously, looked like they were on two different pages there. As you see, the third quarterback come in for Kentucky, Ryan Mosakowski. Young guy tore his labrum last year, had the red shirt, but they feel like this guy could be a big time player for them in the future. Let's see what Mosakowski can do on his first snap. He hands it off to Raymond Sanders. Sanders didn't get touched until he was more than 10 yards downfield, gets it down to the five. Yeah, you look at the future of this Kentucky Wildcat program right now in front of us. You got a freshman at the quarterback position. You got Raymond Sanders, a true freshman at the running back position. I am convinced that Kentucky is going to continue to move their way up and become a major player in the SEC East. Yeah, Joker Phillips says the only thing that has prevented Kentucky from becoming a top 10 program is consistency. He feels like they've now had the consistency in their coaching staff. He continuing what Rich Brooks has done. Toss, Sanders, Sanders stopped at the two. Got to give credit to Joker Phillips. He was a guy that was on the staff had been here, but when he took over, felt like he needed to put his own fingerprint on this program, fired a couple of guys that had been here, brought some new blood in, and they seem to have made some, some strides as far as closing that gap. Florida not looking great in their first two games. South Carolina becoming more of a presence in the East. I think it's going to be wide open this year in the SEC East. That's Mark Santoro, who is down on the field at the four-yard line, got shaken up on that play. So clock stopped on a second down and goal. Let's check out some of the Southeastern Conference scores from this second full weekend of action. Of course, it started on Thursday night with Auburn's victory in Starkville, Alabama. No problems with Joe Pa and Penn State today in the rematch of the 79 National Championship game. South Carolina throttled Georgia defensively. South Carolina did a number on the Bulldogs, beat them by 11. Georgia couldn't get anything done offensively. Arkansas finally got their offense going. That was a 7-0 game until the third quarter. Razorbacks win it. Florida uh, beat South Florida 38-14. Look at that. Oregon and Tennessee going at it third quarter. As you take a look at the Southeastern Conference Eastern Division standings, Carolina at the top. Georgia Vanderbilt there at the bottom. Vanderbilt losing to LSU. And, of course, the Bulldogs now have three more games to play, Chris, without A.J. Green. Yeah, A.J. Green, you clearly could tell the Bulldog offense missed him today. Uh, obviously, Aaron Murray, that's his favorite target. They missed a couple deep balls that you wonder if A.J. Green had been in there, if they would have been able to connect on him. But that's a big win for South Carolina. They've uh, built some confidence, I believe, after a win last week against Southern Miss and then this week against Georgia. We always used to consider that first game against Tennessee when I was at Florida the swing game. You get a early win there, and it's almost like a game and a half. Now Georgia drops back. South Carolina takes the lead early in the SEC East. Santoro walks off the field. You mentioned uh, Florida and Tennessee. That is the big game on the schedule next week. Of course, for more than a decade, that was virtually an Eastern Division championship game. That is not the case this year. Might be. Might be the case. You might never be know. the case. But, I mean, in the past, you always yeah. looked at that game. You said, oh, yeah, that's for the East. You can't say that definitively here on weekend number three, no, but that's for the East. Exactly. I mean, I think every year it seemed like the winner of that ball game would ultimately go on to represent the SEC East and the SEC championship game, but again, I, I think it's wide open. Um, clearly, 
right now, if I had to look at the best team in the East, the team playing the most consistent, it would have to go to Coach Spurrier's yeah. South Carolina Gamecock team. Maybe this is the year South Carolina, of course, uh, perhaps riding the momentum of their baseball team's College World Series yeah. National Championship, the first real big team national championship in school history. Perhaps they can cash in and get them their first football championship. Well, I think it's all about what Kentucky's trying to do at South Carolina, and that has been bringing quality players in. They got Lattimore from the state of South Carolina to stay home. He's going to be a big time player for them, and I think the same goes for Kentucky. If they're able to recruit guys that are in the state of Kentucky, in Ohio, in Indiana, convince those big time prospects to come, they got a bright future ahead of them. Sanders scores his second touchdown of the fourth quarter, and it's 62 28. We talked about Kentucky imposing their will upon the Hilltoppers. They've done that all night long. Nice power running game downhill as Sanders gets into the end zone for the second time tonight. And while the fans will no doubt be slapping themselves on the backs and congratulating themselves for a big victory here tonight, Joker Phillips, I can tell you right now, he is not going to be happy about those four touchdowns and the big plays that his defense allowed to the Western big plays, Kentucky University. Exactly, you hit it on the head. He was not a fan last week of them giving up the 80-yard touchdown run by Louisville late in that ball game. Tonight, they gave up an early touchdown to Bobby Rainey, a big kickoff return, and then a long touchdown pass. He wants to limit those explosion plays, so while you feel good about what you did in getting a win, it's a great teaching opportunity going into next week's ballgame. And this, of course, is the second consecutive ball game that they have allowed a running back to eclipse the 100-yard mark. Powell last week for Louisville, and of course, Rainey here tonight for Western Kentucky University. Are you a true college football expert? Prove it and win an HD TV and more. Log on to CSS-Sports.com. Click the Stars of Tomorrow link and tell us who will shine brightest in the future. If your expert opinion is voted the best, you win. Night winding down here in Lexington, Kentucky Wildcats. About to be 2-0 now with a five touchdown lead on Western Kentucky. Kentucky kickoff unit's got a lot of work tonight after the uh, seven, we got nine touchdown performance there. I had to do a little math in my head quickly, but uh, certainly they have done a great job of covering kicks with the exception of the long return by Willie McNeil early in the ball game. McNeil. Prince to the sideline got jammed out of bounds by the kicker, Justin Henderson. Kicker, try, kicker tried to lower his head a little bit on you there. You never want to get knocked down or out of bounds by the kicker. Now let's look at the, the no, kicker here. Yeah, number 90, Justin Henderson, by my account, he's the third string kickoff man because Mansoor started McIntosh was number two on the depth chart, and now you've got Justin Henderson. Actually, uh, he's actually it's Simmons. Says on our roster it's Henderson but he's got Simmons on his back so <laughs> it's I'm a sure good his parents will be happy to yeah. see him on television either way good opportunity to get some young guys <laughs> exactly. in the ball game there and as you mentioned uh, earlier uh, this Kentucky Wildcat offense here most points since November 1st of 2003 against Arkansas that's when they went seven overtime yeah. took him seven overtimes to score as many as they have tonight in uh, just under four quarters of play man down is Russell the running back who got shaken up on the special teams coverage. So Donald Russell will make his way to the sideline now moving under his own power. Yeah, you know those records like when they say 63 points in a seven overtime. Yeah. That I don't Shouldn't that count. doesn't count. Yeah. Because you got the ball, you know, at the, at 25, the 25 yard line. Yeah, yeah it's, it's deceptive <laughs> there. I think uh, clearly this has been a great offensive performance tonight. An opportunity to get a bunch of guys some repetitions before you get into conference play. The great thing about it is you can dress out so many more guys in non-conference games. So those players, as we mentioned Simmons earlier, getting into the ball game, they work hard in practice every week, get rewarded for what they do out on the scout team and giving the starters a look. Well, the Hilltoppers back on offense and Matt Pelasasa, who fumbled the first uh, opportunity he had to run a play, will get a second opportunity right here. Dustin Boyer in motion. Toss goes to the backup tailback. Flag down on the play. Avery Hibbett 
on the carry. We're going to have a little illegal motion there. Dustin Boyer, the wide receiver, was going in to crack on the defensive end. I think he got a little overzealous and started moving upfield before the snap of the ball. So Hilltoppers going in reverse. This is just the second all-time meeting between Western Kentucky University and Kentucky in football in over 90 years of school history. But oddly enough, this is the first year of a four-year contract. So the rivalry has been recognized, and they're going to play. In fact, next year they'll play at LP Field in Nashville. That will be the designated Western Kentucky University home game. You talked about recognizing. I think it's big that Kentucky has agreed to play them and helping to produce more of a rivalry within the state of Louisville and Western Kentucky University. It's only going to help this program grow. You know, they, they're getting more visibility. They're taking as a legitimate opponent, and I think that, uh, as Willie Tiger told us, he feels like they need to beat Kentucky. And before this four-year contract's up, they got to beat him if they want to get to where Kentucky and some of these other teams are in the area. And here's a sign of the times, and let us say that this is a good sign of the times in that Willie Taggart, African-American, and Joker Phillips, African-American, are coaching against each other in this ball game tonight, and not until the three and a half minute mark left in this ball game did we make that a storyline. In the past, that would have been a primary storyline, but in fact, there are three African American head coaches in this state now, with uh, Charlie Strong now taking the reins of the Louisville program. And we asked Willie Taggart about the significance of two African American coaches facing off. He said, Look, it, it's great for the cause, but I just want to be known as a good head coach where it doesn't even matter uh, what color I am. I think it's getting more to that point as we see more African-American coaches being named head coaches in the FBS. Both of these coaches uh, coaching their second game as the head coaches, of course, Joker Phillips with a little bit different yeah. situation than that of Willie Taggart. Yeah, Willie Taggart has been faced with a tough task of trying to build a program up from the bottom. As you mentioned, it looks like they're on their way to their 22nd consecutive loss. Willie Taggart says, look, we got nowhere to go but up. Tries to put a positive spin on it, and when you get a chance to talk to him and be around of him, or be around him, he's got this infectious personality, a guy that is very positive. He's going to weed out some of the folks that don't belong. Already eight guys from the program last year have been dismissed or have gone elsewhere. So I think he's a guy that is the right coach for this job. We'll see if he can continue to build on some of the success that they've had in, in the first two ball games. Well, he learned playing for the great Jack Harbaugh, who led uh, Western Kentucky University to a national championship, a Division I AA national championship back in 2002, which was his final season. In 14 seasons, Jack Harbaugh, 91 and 68. In fact, when Western Kentucky, the losing streak started in 2008 with a 2-10 two and 10 record, that snapped a streak of 12 consecutive seasons of winning team. records. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. You look at the program right now in a 22-game losing streak, and people not familiar with the program say, oh, man, that's a yeah. horrible losing program. The, the fact of the matter is they've got a great history, a yeah. great football tradition at Western Kentucky, just not at the FBS level. Yeah, they've, they've built some great new facilities there in uh, Bowling Green. They are a program that I think, you know, they, they've had a lot of success at the 1AA level, but uh, looking to build on some of the, that success at the next level, they feel like they can get there. And, I, I, you know, being around Willie Taggart, I believe him. His enthusiasm is infectious. There's no question about that. You saw Raymond Sanders with the return, tried to scoop up a quick hop and take it all the way and got down to the 41-yard line. Meantime, Joker Phillips, and there's the historical mark. First uh, head coach, 2-0 start since Paul Bear Bryant went 3-0 back in 1946. And Joker's got an excellent opportunity to make it 3-0 next week when they host Akron, a team that got beat by Gardner-Webb today. Yeah, that's uh, looking good for them next week as they head into uh, that ballgame. After that, get into a tough SEC schedule that uh, includes going to the Swamp for the opener. Um, that's going to be the first true test of how good 
the talent is yeah. at this level. They want to be the best. They got to beat the best to be able to compete with those four and five star recruits that Florida seems to load up every single year in the recruiting class. Defense will have to be better. Special teams will have to be better. They gave up a 67 yard kick return last week against Louisville. They gave up an 89 yard kick return for touchdown against uh, Western Kentucky University here tonight and big plays. Uh, by the opposing offense and big plays on special teams are things that they're going to have to get uh, ironed out before they get into their Southeastern Conference schedule. But they've got another two weeks before they have to worry about that. It's a lot easier to correct things after you win ball games than it is to go back after you lose them. You win. You keep your guys on the edge by saying, look, we didn't play perfectly tonight. Here's what we need to improve on. We got to limit the big plays. We got to play better on special teams. And you're able to do it in a more positive way than if you would coming off a loss. Down to the final 27 seconds. And I don't know that we'll have another play run here tonight. Joker Phillips getting hugs, giving Rock a hug. Rock's had a big, and there's Randy Sanders down on the sidelines. T. Martin there. Congratulations all the way around as the Wildcats start this season 2-0. Convincing 63 28 victory tonight over Western Kentucky University. Willie Taggart will have to wait for another day to snap that losing streak, which now is at 22 games. Down to the sideline in Allison Williams. Thanks, Matt. Randall, 63 points for Kentucky tonight. It seemed you guys were able to execute your offense at will. What do you attribute that to? Uh, just execution. That's something we wanted to come in. We wanted to make sure we executed our offense. Uh, we, we, we wanted to put points on the board and show that we, we had the ability to score points, and we just wanted to make a statement tonight. You threw for a touchdown, caught a touchdown, and returned a putt for a touchdown. They were all pretty impressive, but which one was the most fun for you? Uh, I say the most fun was probably throwing just because I uh, still got a little bit of quarterback in me, and being able to throw a touchdown is still uh, it's, it's something special to me. What is it about your versatility that makes you so effective? It's just my love for the game. I just love football and anything I can do in any way I can help my team win. I want to do everything I can to help them. Randall, you guys are off to a 2-0 start under Joker Phillips. What does he bring to this team? How do you guys play differently under him? Just the intensity level and uh, our focus and our preparation. We, we're well prepared. They put us in the best situations that we can be in. We just got to go out there and play for them then. Randall, thanks for your time. Congrats. All right, thank you. All right, uh, Chris, let's take a look at our Bank of America final stats. Yeah, big differential there in the passing yards. Clearly the difference in this ball game, but uh, total overall offensive effort there, well balanced by the Kentucky Wildcats, something we've seen in the first two weeks of this season as they about mirrored each other last week against L uh, Louisville. Well, congratulations to the Kentucky Wildcats. Now 2-0 on the season, a 63 28 victory tonight over Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers drop now to 22 games in a row. They've got Indiana next week. Kentucky's got Akron next week before Florida the week after. Yeah, we mentioned the uh, non-conference schedule of Western Kentucky. Tough non-conference schedule. I know they'll be looking forward to getting into some of that Sunbelt Conference action. Joker Phillips making history tonight. A 2-0 start doesn't sound like much, but you got to go all the way back to the days of Paul Bear Bryant to find a Kentucky coach who has started his career 2-0, and he does so tonight in very convincing fashion with a 63-28 victory. Randall Cobb with a night to remember. Bobby Rainey had a good night, too, in a losing effort for the Hilltoppers. Our producer has been Todd Menhinnett, and now for Chris Doring, Allison Williams, and the entire SEC TV crew, I'm Matt Stewart. Good night from Commonwealth Stadium, where the Wildcats win big.